you just heard Stubbs Corner calling out for a bit more effort. So I think we um, hit the nail on the head. He, he, he may be just a bit tentative being it's uh, his uh, debut because you just heard he's calling out for a bit more effort because he is pouring out his shots and sort of, uh, sort of tapping his opponent. Let's see what the fourth round, fourth and last round that there was. Back on that jab, followed by a hook, right hand. I see, he needs to just keep him on, keep him on the ropes. Half a step back, so he relaxes and then straight back in again. The yep. good thing about having a lot of amateur experience is that you also have a high output. I suppose, but... Um, I mean, not necessarily, not, yeah. but in this case, you know, Stubbs has a high output. Mm -hmm. Compared to Sanchez. Yes. <laughs> Don't get on the wrong side of Dwayne Sinclair. Oh, no, 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 not the wrong side. We're just accurate with our, <laughs> with the words we speak. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think it's just um, from what we're used to, they do call me hotshot, you see. They do still yeah, call you hotshot. They do. That's better, that's better from Stubbs, but it just smothered his work just a little bit. Yeah. As you say, that half step back would do him a lot of favours. That's it, and he's just stepping forward when he throws that right hand. If he pushes it through with his feet and hips, it'd be a solid, solid right hand, but he's just stepping forward just a little bit and it's leaning over. To push through his hips. He's got the right ideas, just a, as you say, just a little debut. Adjustment. Exactly, small small adjustments uh, to the program where it's the hurt business rather than scoring the shots. Sanchez just uh, attempted quite a nasty overhand right, but luckily missed. Luckily for Stubbs, I mean. It would be nice to see Stubbs follow through after those shots landing, follow through with more. Precisely, precisely. Add that pressure, you know. At the moment, it feels a little bit like he just sits back to observe what's just happened. That's right. And with this referee, Kieran McCann, he does let you go to work. So he, he, it would be good for him to um, use that to his advantage. I think it's a, a nice successful debut for Stubbs. He's got the got the nerves out of the way. Let's see what he's like in uh, about two. Hopefully he's on the next show. Okay, so over to the school cards. Over to the MC. Ladies and gentlemen, after four rounds of boxing, we go to the referee scorecard. Referee Kieran McCann scores the bout 40 to 36. And your winner, Gabriel Stubbs! Nice successful debut. For Gabriel Stubbs.
that performance. Yeah, okay. Um, it wasn't... I feel like I could have been a bit fitter. I think the, the event got to me. Obviously, he's very experienced as well. He's a good boxer. Um, he's tough. He's technical. So, yeah, he had a lot of skill on me, I think. But, um, yeah, okay. A lot to work on. Obviously, this was your debut, your professional debut. Tell us a little bit about your amateur experience. So, I've had about 23 bouts, something like that, so not loads. Um, I, don't have, I don't come from a pedigree or anything like that. But, um, yeah, no, boxers, the amateurs, it all the way to the seniors, and then open class. And I took a long break to coach for a bit, and then uh, yeah, I came back during COVID, which is the worst time to turn over. But, yeah, so, yeah, that's it, really. How do you feel your amateur experience kind of helped you tonight in your pro debut in that ring? Um, mentally, boxing as a senior helped a lot. Um, obviously, fine as an adult, as in the pros. So, yeah. Um, also, did had some weird mix, um, mix and matches in the, in the amateurs um, and jumped into open class quite early. So, it definitely helped mentally. But um, skill-wise, I still think I need, need to work on a lot. Yeah. What do you think in terms of obviously, you know, the pro, pro boxing is the hurt business, right? So what do you think in terms of your performance tonight, where are the areas of improvement? Being composed, um, I think my fitness could use a little bit of work. I took the bout fairly short notice. I was ticking over still, but I took it fairly short notice. So um, I could have, I think to stay ready is really important as a pro. So it's a lesson learned. Um, I think just, just coming forward, putting shots together, footwork on the back foot, um, but mainly just experience. I just need to keep getting out there having fights, I think, yeah. Well, you're one and oh now. Congratulations on your pro debut. We really look forward to seeing you in the ring. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Black Box, for having me. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, now it's time for our second bout of the evening. Scheduled for three minute rounds in the heavyweight division. And now, making his way to the ring, Milan Paunov. And now, ladies and gentlemen, his opponent making his way to the ring, Tom Simmons! Ladies and gentlemen, this bout scheduled for four three minute rounds in the heavyweight division. This bout sanctioned by the British Boxing Board of Control, the timekeeper at the bell, Mr. Nick White, and the third man in charge of the action, referee Mark Bates. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introduce it to you first.
And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner, he's wearing the black and gold, his official weight of 214.6 pounds. He has a professional record of 15 fights, five wins, and four of those wins come in by way of knockout. Hailing from Bulgaria, Milan Pauna! And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner. He is wearing the blue and white. His official weight of 222.8 pounds. He is currently undefeated with two wins. Hailing from Surrey United Kingdom, Tom Simmons. in his first two bouts. Got the potential to be a, an exciting fighter. He understands how to use his feints to land the shots, those eye-catching shots. So let's see if he brings it tonight. Always quite exciting in the heavyweight division. Anything could happen. What do we know about his opponent? He's had a, enough uh, ring experience not not any knockouts at all but he's definitely had enough ring experience to give him um, Simmons some trouble see as I've seen his op opponent I've only seen him twice before but his reaction to Simmons shots is letting me know that uh, he has got a bit of, of weight behind him because I have not seen his uh, opponent cover up in that way before Usually just, uh, he would catch a shot to return, but he, he, he was a bit comfortable sitting on the ropes because he's a bit tentative there. So th that tells me there's a, a, a bit of sting behind uh, Simmons' shots. It's interesting, you mentioned the feints really early on and, and that's, that's really what's standing out in the first round, his use of feints. It just, ke just keeps the, uh, your opponent uh, thinking. That's right. Interesting stylistic matchup here. That's it. He sees a, a, a opponent's waiting for that for that counter. He, he's probably figured out by now he can't punch with Simmons. Yeah. He can't match him for strength. So he's trying to make Simmons miss and let land just uh, eye catching shots. Simmons started boxing at 13. Just went to the boxing gym by chance. Went with his uh, brother. And then found out he did like the sports, and then the rest is um, history. How old is Simmons now? That is a very good question. That's what I would like to know. I do not know. <laughs> <laughs> nice control from Simmons on the inside. Quite a wild hook, Simmons threw, which his opponent spotted coming his way. Using those feints effectively. That's it. And as they say, I do not know, but I know where to find out. And Simmons is 27 years old. <laughs> it's a long time he's been boxing. Just smothered his work a little bit there. That was a, a good right hand from Simmons. Just stepped forward a bit too much with that, that shot. Reached the end of the first round. I see. And I, I liked how Simmons, he was taking control of the bout, pushing his opponent back. He just need to um, settle down a little bit, a little bit too jittery. That's made him um, uh, uh, smother his work, step a little bit uh, too close when throwing that backhand. But definitely good work from Simmons. Yeah, I think he completely um, demonstrated ring generalship in that round. It will be interesting to see how he steps it up through the gears across the rounds that follow. Simmons given up a, a good career to uh, 
concentrate on his boxing. He, he was a, a roofer. It's a good trade to be in. He's given up his boxing. He says it gives him a bit of focus and purpose. He likes the routine of the boxing. So um, having a good career, he's, he's definitely taking this seriously to, come, to make a name of, for himself in the boxing world. Body shot from Simmons. It's good to see him finish at the top. Of that net. I don't think with a point like this, one shot's just not enough. I think twos and threes is what he needs to throw. Simmons also in his, his previous two bouts. I know it's early stages, but he, he is also comfortable on the inside. His opponent really doesn't want to be in the end of those shots. Every time Simmons is there, he sort of rushes forward to tries to smother. That's right, that's right. But as you can see, where Simmons has stepped forward and gone a little bit square, that's where his, um, his opponent was able to land those uh, those lead hooks. What would you say, Dwayne, from your experience, is sort of like the best type of defense? against an opponent like Simmons' opponent, you know, someone who doesn't doesn't actually move forward behind the jab at all, kind of comes in with those wild hooks and those sweeping right hands. Uh, you simply just got to keep it basic because, as you say, the, with the, the quite wild, you can't really time to where they're going to come from. They're coming from a, a sort of unorthodox type of angle. So you just got to keep your, your guard tight in, in where it needs to be. Instead of rather uh, sort of this new style where it was adopting like a, a sort of a, a, a Philly shell type of guard, just keep it conventional, keep your hands up where they're supposed to be and then it gives them a little bit more work as to where they need to, to land the shot. Good work on here on the inside from Simmons. Beautiful shot landed. Volume of punches, don't want to punch himself out, step back and dig him in a little bit more. He's very he's square on at the moment. That's it, that's it. And that's where it's dangerous because he's, he's uh, as he throws shots, that's half your guard gone. Yes. So he's, he's, he's continuing to throw shots, not thinking about his defense. You don't want your, his opponent to throw anything uh, under panic while he's under such attack. Good overhand right there from Simmons. Yes, he does need to be a little bit careful on the inside because he does get quite square on. So I would like to see Simon just bring his guard up to more conventional so he can feel where his opponent lands his shots then he can return quicker with twos or threes. But what's happening is his opponent is landing and then covering up. So it's hard for him to, um, to return. You're a fan of that traditional guard, aren't you, Dave? It's basics work. The basic work. Until you, until you sort of go up in the levels and, and got a bit more ring craft, a bit more experience, then you can start experimenting a bit more. Just keep it simple and win. There's a good round from Simmons. Hopefully he didn't punch himself out. But you can see he's now getting comfortable and he's understanding the rhythm of what's in front of him. Putting a bit more venom behind him shots. It'll be interesting to see how he sort of moves through those gears in the next, in the next few rounds. That's right, that's right. How many rounds is it scheduled for? Four? He's in a four round, that's right. Halfway through. Gosh, we're only in the uh, second bout and this place is packed. Great atmosphere here tonight. See, that's a testament to the shows. They've never, I've never been to a, a show that disappoints from a black book global. Absolutely right. Round three, underway. Yeah, I've noticed the, uh, his opponent does something strange with his gum shield, sort of moves it around his mouth. I, I could not comment on that. It, hopefully it's not, there's nothing wrong with um, the fire, but you want to bite down on your gum shield, make sure it's still. Uh, unless he's looking to buy those time when he's under attack and that gum shield falls out, but hopefully he's, they, he hasn't got a problem. It doesn't look like moving. it's problematic. Maybe mm. probably just a habit. 
Hopefully. Oof. See, at that point, that's where Simmons would need to uh, use that jab a little bit more. Then he would have landed that, that backhand uh, successfully. It's up and down, up and down. This guy's the shot you want to land. Yeah, set it up with that jab. That's right. Control the feet a little bit more. Is it where you step forward when he throws that right hand? It does take away a lot of the power that could potentially land. But he does have it. He does have the bar under control. Yeah, his opponent also has quite an unorthodox style about him. That's right. Difficult to read, I would say. And, and that's where it becomes even more important to keep it basic. Keep it basic. Throw them shots. Control your jab, push through that backhand, and when you start, when your opponent starts to settle down, then you can start getting creative with the shots, bringing in the hooks and the uppercuts. Keep it basic. Just sting his, pop his head back, let him know you're present. But it's good work from Simmons. It's good to get these awkward opponents out of the way in early in your career. Get that experience. Yeah, exactly. So this is what I'm, I'm used to seeing, whereby Simon lands one, then he returns straight. Then opponent has returned straight away. Rather than what was happening in, in the first round, was covering up too much. Oh, beautiful, beautiful backhand by Simmons. That's right, but again, he stepped forward just a bit, a bit too much. I'd like to see him follow up with a shot after that, and it could be, could have been an early night for him. From there, throw the jab from there. That would have been good. His opponent beat him to it. Just from there. Doesn't need to get too close. His opponent is looking a little bit comfortable in this round, using those angles quite nicely. Short bent arm shots. That's right. I think this um, Simmons. I think he's, he's, he's starting to look for those power shots. <laughs> Telegraphing him too much. He needs to stick to what he was doing initially, popping that jab out, and those those power shots will be successful. But his opponent's got far too much experience for you to lead with the hook, for you to just lead with those those those, those winding shots. Yes. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> Interested to know what uh, Simmons Corner is telling him into the final round. Fourth and final round. That's it. This is what I was looking for earlier. Popping that jab, bring them shots up through that tight guard. He doesn't want to step in as he has been. Creating a 50-50 atmosphere. Keep him at the end of your fist. A little bit of swelling underneath Simmons eye. So that was about to say. His little mouth underneath that right eye. Stepping in, going square, making it easy for the counter. Nice turn back into the centre. Little step back body shot. Just step back and bring it up the middle. Nice work to the body from Simmons. Straight on him. As soon as the ref moves, and says box, he'll be straight on him. It's the last round. Bring it up, uppercut. So he's done a half a step back. He should have thrown an uppercut as, as his opponent was leaning forward. Good shot. Referees allowing them to box their way out. So Simmons should have gone back into those punches and punches. So they're, they're waiting for the ref to speak where he's not going to. He's told him to, to, to keep boxing. That's right. To keep that guard up. 
Yeah, see, that, that's where it's important. You know, that lead hand was down, slipped right into a shot. That's right. That's why keeping it basic. As I'm a, as you pointed out earlier, I'm a, I'm a fan of the, the basic traditional guard. What do you call it, that lead hand, the antenna? <laughs> is that what you call it? That's exactly what I call it. <laughs> it's the antenna. <laughs> I, I, I antenna. They're your feelers. Let's you know where he is and lets you control the bout. But if your antenna is right by your waist, it's not in use at all. Can't feel anything. If anyone has seen Hotshot Box before, you'll you'll know that he is um, very very yeah very confident with that lead hand being up high. That's it. Just step back, step back, and let it just be conclusive that you're in control. I know he's winning the bout definitely, but step back and let them see because inside it's 50 50, depending on where the judges are sitting. Step back, he just took a, took took a, a big one, a big shot there from going square. Oh, his opponent had his arms up in the air, feeling very confident. I, I can say the, f the first round was to Simmons, second round was to Simmons. The last two? Yeah, it's a tough call, the last two. It depends on what, you, what the judges are looking for. Hopefully he's got it, because I, li I like what Simmons is trying to do with the feints, variations of shots up and down, variations of power, a few taps and then throws in a few shots. I like what he's developing. He's got a fan in you. No, <laughs> I've just uh, called him what I see. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, after four rounds of boxing, we go to the referee scorecard. Referee Mark Bates scores the bout 40 to 36. And your winner, hailing from Surrey United Kingdom, Tom Simmons. Congratulations on your win. How are you feeling? Yeah, I feel good. Yeah, um, it was tough. Like, I knew it would be tough because he's Bulgarian and I had a Bulgarian from my debut and they usually are quite, they come, come to fight. So, yeah, no, I'm, uh, I felt like I could have boxed better. Um, but, yeah, I was done now. Yeah. I mean, quite an awkward opponent. You know, he was not your typical coming forward behind the jab opponent at all. Where do you feel like you could have improved? Well, because he, he's only five foot nine. My, uh, in my like, training camp, I'm inspiring boys at six foot ten, because he was last minute. So to fight someone shorter than me is that like, feels really strange. So um, yeah, I mean it's obviously like, there's going to be some opponents that are shorter on my height, but yeah, I just have to get used to um, sparring like short boys. So yeah, because he, he took away my uh, he was coming was on the back foot, so I wasn't not like, reaching my jab, and then he was just waiting for, to counter. But um, yeah, good exciting performance though, Dean. What did you make of it? Um, big up. 
Tom Simmons is always, man, look, he always does it the hard way. <laughs> in his first debut, that was a hard, hard um, entry into professional boxing. So we've got to give him credit. And yet again, he's here again on short notice fighting. And somewhat, you know, unorthodox guy doing different stuff. But I think you didn't help yourself. I think you could have jabbed a little bit more. Um, I, I, I like that you done the zoomer in there. I was watching Zuma, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it. That was good. That's very rare, you know. That you don't see a lot of guys old school style, you know. But you got to be mindful because the better guys are going to double jab and whip right uppercut if you're leaning too forward. But obviously the Zuma covers that. But I think using the jab a little bit more, jabbing to the body, jabbing to the head, will open up your opponent to the shots you're trying to land. You know what I mean? If you're only just walking forward, maybe sipping, sipping, and then trying to work the body, everything's off the jab. You got to be smart. It's chess, not checkers. So. You know what I mean? You'll learn. You're, you're still early in your infancy in your career. Continue to grow. Go back to the drawing board. You've won tonight. So, you know, give yourself a pat on your back. Your fans have come to, you know, enjoy it. And you've won. So, you know, there's nothing wrong. It's, all, it's learning. It's always learning. So, continue doing your thing, man. Great advice from Dean. Yeah. When can we expect to see you back out? Uh, end of April. So, yeah, I'm going to try and get four or five this year. So, yeah, April's the next one. We're really looking forward to it. Great performance. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Cheers. Cheers, Dean. Ladies and gentlemen, now it's time for our third bout of the evening. Scheduled six three-minute rounds in the super flyweight division. And now, making his way to the ring, Faisan Fizzy Shahi. And now, ladies and gentlemen, his opponent making his way to the ring, Alfie Classy Clay. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout scheduled for six three-minute rounds in the super flyweight division. This bout is sanctioned by the British Boxing Board of Control, the timekeeper at the bell, Nick White, and the third man in charge of the action, referee Kieran McCann. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner. He's wearing the silver and white. His official weight of 113.2 pounds. He has a professional record of three fights, one loss, one draw, and one win. Hailing from Bradford, Yorkshire, United Kingdom, Fiza Fizzy Shahi. 
and his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner he is wearing the blue and gold his official weight of 110.2 pounds he is currently undefeated with five wins and one of those wins coming by way of knockout hailing from Guilford Surrey United Kingdom Alfie Classy Nice angles. So they've given him that nickname of um, Classy. Let's see if he can pull that off tonight. Living up to the name. We hope. It's always exciting when Alfie's out, I must say. He's a yeah, yeah. he's Do regular, he's regular. That's right, and with his style it is risky, but he does seem to um the feet are usually quick enough to get him out of trouble. Little exhale from Alfie before he starts. Yeah. His opponent with three bouts, one win, one loss and one draw. Opponent using those feints. He's Alfie's seventh bout, so the... Use, the, use that footwork to get him out of trouble there. Little pivot off. Sorry, Alfie, Alfie's sixth bout. Oh, a lovely hook just landed from Alfie. Five wins of one KO. As you can see, this footwork. Very elusive, very elusive, unorthodox. But he just says, as he starts to progress through his bouts, so hopefully he doesn't uh, use too much energy with unnecessary movement. But at the moment, with the, the four rounders, it's, it's working it's for working. him. It's working, yeah, that's right. Lots of support for Alfie in the building tonight, as there always is. That's right. Is from Alfie keeping his, his opponent on offset. As you can see, he's settled down with that footwork a bit. He's trying to get his opponent to commit. That's right, he's not bouncing around so much on the ring curtain. Kind of getting a little bit more comfortable centering. Yeah, he lost his foot in a bit, but the shot did land as he as he was going over. But good, um, good eye from Kerry McCann. Yeah, it's a great referee. Beautiful hook. After going a little bit square, he, 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 he took an unnecessary shot there. So this is where. Well, I've got by my old fashioned saying about the um, keeping it simple at first to, to, to get to know a bit about your opponent. That's right, he went a little bit square and also it felt a little bit like his guard sort of depleted as he went in for the shots and it left him open. 100%. He's to be, I think he's to be a bit careful. I see his opponent coming in, coming in with his head a little bit. So where he's coming in a bit square, he could be a um, victim of a, a, a nasty head clash. That's right, yeah. Interesting round, first round. Initially, Alfie started off classy, showing that he was making his opponent miss and then scoring. But then, as he settled down, he, 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 his opponent come back into the bout. Well, I wouldn't go far to say it's 50 50, but it's, it, it's looking that way. You know, there was, two, there was two moments in that first round where Alfie lost his footing. One was when he took the slip, uh, and the other one was on the ropes. 
That's right. Is there something about the bouncing around footwork that means that he's not so firm on his feet? Well, that's it. He, he needs, he's, he's moving um, unnecessarily. You need to move for purpose. So therefore, what's happening is where he's moving too much, he's not, he's, the experience isn't there to settle his feet with the shot. So he's trying to throw as he's moving. And again, that, to do that is very difficult. Again, he needs experience to do such things. Beautiful check hook there from Alfie. That's right. Alfie, like that. Alfie has a strong corner with him tonight. So hopefully they've um, given him um, some advice. Settle it down to score and assert his authority. Hmm. It's a little bit of waiting a bit too long. I think Alfie should use that footwork but just a bit more control to keep his opponent settled. Because again, he's, he's, where he's going square, he's he, he taken a Good right hand there. And, and a very good right hand. And, and we're only human. You can't take too many of those all night. There you go, Lovely job. Is it going a little bit square there? He's going to... That's it. I feel like he could pop that jab. As he's coming back to the centre, and his opponent's foreign him. He's just stick that jab out. That's nice right. and venomous. Keep him at range. That's right. And from here, see, he, he's making a miss, but he's just going a little bit too far for my liking. So he's not being able to capitalise on offsetting his opponent. Yeah, if he was just a little bit more economical about it. Economical, is that the word? Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll go with that. Yeah. Just waiting a little bit too long. Lifting that hand. Stepping in too close and going square. And also it that can his, be dangerous. his chin is quite high up in the air as well. That's right, that's right. But as I did say, his footwork seems to get him out of trouble. And very both, both opponents going for it. Alfie needs to stick out that jab. Too much feet, too much feet. Stick out, let him know that you're there. Same for his opponent. He's, he's, he's waiting for Alfie. Now with Alfie being slightly quicker, he, what he needs to do is just, um, again, Spiteful shots. Spiteful shots. I mean, I think it's fair to say they're both quite, they're quite spiteful with their shots. Very, very open to a head clash, though. That's right. They just, they're stepping a little bit too close. That's from there. He needs to pop. As he's the taller guy, he needs to use that range. Just pop from there. So as you say, the same spiteful shots from there. Jab, up and down, vary the range, make Alfie think and get him to react. Coming to the end of this round. Good round for both men in this round. Yes, they both seem to have settled into each other's rhythm and the fight is progressing. Interesting round, very interesting round. Both men getting comfortable and throwing more shots. But as I say, they're both smothering their work. So it's it's going to be hard to split them. I, I'd love to know how the judges are scoring this one. But I would say a bit more of the um, eye-catching shots were from Alfie, although the opponent did um, land, have some success throughout the round. Three or five? Five? Or six? Sorry, guys, there was a typo on the sheet. Hard to read. for it. That's the thing, when you've got somebody that's quite elusive, you've got a punch with him, and I think that's what he, he, he's, his uh, corner has told uh, Shahid. 
contact with him when he commits start throwing the athlete just a tad quicker than him yeah it's a little bit too much waiting here As you can see Shahid he's trying to he's trying to go for two shots as soon as two shots with Alfie. Good attack from Shahid. You see lift that head up. The thing is, when you're throwing so many shots and quite wildly, one of them is bound to land. That's right. I think that's exactly what they're hoping for. But, uh, what Alfie needs to do, he needs to a bit more lateral movement. He, he's, he's concentrating on the feet, but the head is staying. Stationary. Staying stationary, and that's what been, he's been able to land those 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 wild shots. Bit more truck movement from uh, Alfie when he's working those angles. Lovely, lovely shot landed by Alfie. Be awaiting some feints, some feints from both men to get them to react before you land the shot that you want to land. Yeah, it's interesting because um, is it Shahid? That's right. Shahid in the first round was using his feints very effectively and actually was giving Alfie a lot to think about, but that seems to have gone out the window. That's right, that's right. I think he's probably comfortable with, with Alfie's power. Yeah, I like, don't know about you, Dwayne, but from where I'm sat, it kind of looks like Shahid has more power than Alfie. That's right, that's right. And I think what Shahid's doing, because of Alfie's speed, he's, he's waiting for Alfie to commit, then he's going to try and land two or three. How would you score this fight so far? So far, I would say the first round went to, first round went to Clegg. Second round, I would say again, Clegg squeezed it. This round uh, to uh, Shahid. Indeed, yeah, I agree. The exciting mashup. The, the the card is building, and the fights are getting more exciting. This is good to see. As you can see, Team Clegg is um, reading him the right act because he it seemed like he lost concentration a few times in that round, and it was able, and he, he took some unnecessary shots. So you can see by the reaction of the corner, not happy with him. Clegg going to sleep slightly in, in that last round. Round four. Let's see if the advice from the corner has uh, Alfie looking a little bit sharper this round. Starting off the round strong with that double jab. Could but build on it, however. But again, did you see, as he landed that double jab, he literally just turned square and bounced on the spot. He needs to get used to keeping that boxing stance, staying in pole position, whereby you can have a great difference and offense in that position. When you go square, there's not much you can do. That's right. He kind of goes square and then bounces off. That's right. You heard from Shahid's corner, they said keep punching with him. So as I, as I noticed earlier, that's exactly what their plan is. They've noticed uh, as how, how uh, Clegg is approaching this bout. Is there something to be said about, you know, when people have this style of footwork that Clegg has, yes. there's a lack of, you know, planting the feet and throwing from the hips. Yeah, now, that, that is a danger of exactly what, what can happen with this style. So it's something that you need to practice in the gym so that when you're going to throw the shots, as you said, that you get your position first, throw the shots, then move again. But what he, 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 as you say, he's, he's too used to um, bouncing around without getting the, the weight behind the shots. So you, it's moving around, but let the movement mean something. That's right. Because again, sometimes he's, he's moving around, far, he's too far from the opponent. So the movement is unnecessary. That was good movement from, from Clegg. He landed the shot, called the response, laid back from it and then landed his own. So he counted the counter. Good work, he needs to, as he did earlier, he's making, Clegg is making uh, Shahid miss. He needs to capitalize on that. Yeah. 
Shahid's comfortable now. He's got his hands down. But he's just not quick enough to kick. I think he should stick to how he was before, keeping that hand up. When he feels Alfie's shots, release his own. That's right, yeah. Because hands down, he's just letting Alfie score. He's just a little bit quicker than him. Just keep that hand up. Yeah, he's really leaning forward with his uh, head, head that's as right, well. That's right. As he's getting tired, it's, it's, it's more prominent. And nice, that, nice little combination. That's it, that's Alfie. it. Now, Alfie's using that movement properly. Yeah. Settled down and he's a bit a la more lateral movement as we were asking for in the, in the yeah. last round. Kind of leant back on his back foot, came up with a right uppercut, lead hook. Good work from Alfie. Better round, better. Round five. Let's see how they respond to the last round. Nice little body chop, Murphy. I like how Alfie's looking to counter the counter. I think he's realised what's happening. They're trying to punch with him. So he's waiting for that counter and he's countering the counter. But again, as you noticed in, in the early rounds, his chin is a little bit high. It is. And then he ends up taking a left hook. A bit too much waiting. Just let him know you're there. Just keep touching him. Keep touching his jab. Pushing through. Pushing it through. Actually, if you set more shots up with the jab, it will be really effective because he likes to lead with the hook, and it's very obvious what he's about to throw. 100%. I understand what he's comfortable with in the gym, but at, at, at this level, it, you, you, you won't be able to get away with it. It's a bit more of a uh, more experience, and he can uh, get that timing right. You can see that Shahid. Um, his energy has depleted somewhat. That's right, that's right. It's that speed of trying to keep up with, with Clegg. Yes. Rather than using timing. And, the, and if he stuck to what he was doing in initially with those feints, then you get more reaction from Clegg. So make Clegg work when you're not actually working. Good work from both men. There's quite a lot of sting there in that, in that combination that Clegg just threw. That's right. But I, I, I'd like to see again as he's throwing just to take that head off the centre line because he, he's just there for that for that panic shot from uh, Shaheen. That's right, yeah. Beautiful shot from Clegg. I guess he's so used to his feet getting him out of trouble that he's not really concentrated on that trunk movement, that, that defence. That's it, that's it. Started to vary his shots there, vary the range of his shots. I see bruising on both men's faces. Because Cool is asking him not to wait. They both look quite unsteady on their feet as they're in the centre of the ring, swinging it good, out. Good work, good work. Good work from both men. With Shahid to stay in the bout where you can see he's visibly tired. But he didn't let that take over the bat for him. Good work there.
Craig started boxing for self-defense. He was getting bullied. Went to the boxing gym just to be able to defend himself. And then uh, again, uh, as one of the, um, the early gentlemen, he's had a knack for it and then just started competing. He's got uh, John Edwards and Xavier Miller in his corner tonight. Very John. experienced crew now. John is his uncle. Oh yeah. Okay, okay. That's good. Keep it in the family. You have a lot of successful boxing families with that sort of relationship, whether it's the uncle, the father. So let's hopefully um, Clay can mirror that success. Final round. Let's see who wants it more. Shahid nice. looks like he's got a bit more energy. But he's coming in with that head and he's, he's smothering his work. Craig started this, bout, started this round off with a beautiful jab. As you can hear, Shay's corner is saying, work with him. Yeah. Because they, they, they've realised that the footwork and the, the speed is just a little bit, he's a, li a little bit quicker than Shay, so they're saying, work with him. I mean, from everything I've seen in this round so far, it looks like Shahid is looking for a big power shot. That's right. But with him not looking at his opponent, he keeps his head down, you see he, he, he took an unnecessary uppercut. Yes, he did. Where, where it seemed like he was uh, in control, that uppercut just turned that, that, that situation around momentarily. Nice jab there from Craig. Just missed that right hand forward again because he stepped forward with, that, with his, with his uh, right foot. He needs to get into range before throwing. He's committing to the shot when he's out of range, making himself lean in. Yeah. He needs to take his feet with him, that's all. You can just sense the tiredness from both boxes, you that's know. That's right. It's been, a, it's been a tough fight, actually. That's right, but Alfie seems to try to keep that work rate up. So far, he, he's winning this round. Beautiful, good, good beautiful work. right uppercut followed by a right hook or a short straight. It's a right hook. Thank you, Dave. So hard to see from my angle. Okay. We're next to each other. <laughs> you didn't have to hold me up. You could have let that one lie. You see, the shot came for round, so that always makes it a hook. But okay. I can see why you it said um, could have been a short I can see why you said a, a short streak, but it was it what came shot round. For you, and <laughs> now it's getting it's getting exciting. The last minute Spicy. of the round, Spicy. But beautiful, beautiful one Just two. basic, basic. We Love that. You sound like me. <laughs> I'm trying. Now they're both going through the last oh, 10 seconds. I think there's been a head crash. There is blood everywhere. Good work. Good work. That's right. Exciting fight that was. The place is popping. Very exciting bout. Very exciting bout. 
As you said, that uh, cut above Alfie's right eye, head clash. Ladies and gentlemen, after happen. six rounds of boxing, we go to the referee scorecard. Referee Kieran McCann scores the bout. 57 and 57. This bout is a draw. Okay, okay. I would have... I Six rounds of war, and the result was a draw. How are you feeling about that? You look quite disappointed. Um, you know what? Alhamdulillah, we both come out all right, safe. But it's what can you do? Away, I came away to fight, got the draw, just take it and move on forward. That's all. When the result was announced, I mean, I looked at your face. You kind of looked as though you don't agree with the result. Is that fair to say? Um, I thought I landed the cleaner shots. I thought I, I don't know. I thought like I was the one that was setting the pace for the fight, eye catching shots. I'm sure I wobbled him a few times, but everybody begs to differ. So it is what it is. Well done to Alfa. Hard, hard little shit. He came, proved his point, and we had a good time. I mean, it was a really exciting fight, Dwayne. What did you make of the result? Yes, it was a, as you say, exciting fight. I couldn't, you can't argue with the result. I would have said, um, as um, uh, Shay did say, uh, landing a few cleaner shots, but not enough of them. So I would have tipped it towards Alfie, but you can't argue with the, with the, with the result. What advice would you give to Shahid, obviously having watched that fight and watched his performance? Fizzy. Uh, I, do you know what? First thing I would say, if he fancies it, go again for the rematch because it was a good bout. Uh, just a few things, of just keeping his eye on his opponent. Because what was happening, where he was uh, taking unnecessary shots with his head leaning forward. If he stayed, as he said, where he was landing the cleaner shots, but he could see those shots land, then he could follow up. Because I liked what they did start adopting. After I said it in one of the rounds, I said, if he punches with him, because Alfie was quicker than him and a bit more elusive, he'll get more success. And they started doing that. So if he, if he was to keep looking at his opponent, again, he will be able to follow through with those, those, those um, eye-catching shots that he was lending. Rematch, Fizzy, what are we thinking? Let's go. We're ready. Anytime. Bring it to my town now. Let's do it in Bradford. I'll sell more tickets than him as well. Let's do it. <laughs> really exciting. We're looking forward to seeing you back in action. Ladies and gentlemen, now it's time for our next bout of the evening. Scheduled eight three-minute rounds in the middleweight division. And now, making his way to the ring, Lester Espino.
And now, ladies and gentlemen, his opponent making his way to the ring, Tony Montana Badge. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout scheduled for eight three-minute rounds in the middleweight division. This bout is sanctioned by the British Boxing Board of Control, the timekeeper at the bell, Nick White, and the third man in the ring in charge of the action, referee Mark Bates. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner, he is wearing the black trunks. His official weight of 151.6 pounds. He is currently undefeated with three wins, and two of his wins come in by way of knockout. Hailing from Nicaragua, Lesser Espino! And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner. He is wearing the white and red. His official weight of 159 pounds. He has a professional record of 11 fights, one loss and 10 wins. Hailing from Brixton, London, United Kingdom, Tony Montana Watching a Tony Banjo in the white collar circuit. I'm not sure what his amateur career was, but on the white collar circuit, he was um, doing very well. Caught the eye of Prince Nassim Hamid. Let's see what he does here tonight. It's been a while since we've seen Tony Banjo in the ring. That's right. White collar scene used to call him TNT. Is it all the bombs he throws? I would have thought so, but his record doesn't reflect that. In the 10 wins that he has, he has not had a knockout yet. So let's see if he can pull one out tonight. He does usually have a, a quite an orthodox style whereby he's a, sort of a fancy footwork and, and, and jittering to, to offset his opponent's thoughts to land those shots but um, definitely settled down a lot more Tony's left hand's a little bit low he did earlier on take a Unnecessary shots, he's taking them now as he's getting stalked by his opponent. Tony stepping back a little bit too much. I think I'd like to see him push out that jab, make his, make his opponent think of it. He's, he's waiting too long, which is going to let his opponent get, uh, get settled and find his rhythm. Yeah, his opponent's having quite a lot of success in the body, isn't he? That's right. Going a little bit square on the ropes. See, as he says, the opponent's targeting that body. It's totally a little bit loose around the midsection, so um, 
that's going to be target for anybody that has a little bit ring seven. There we go. That shot landed to the body. I'd like to tell you push out that jab a little bit more instead of pouring the jab. Push it out, let him know that he's there. Get back yeah, to the center. He's not giving his opponent much to think about at the moment. We'll see how the fight progresses, but so far, That's right. his opponent, the red corner, has just been walking, walking him down. That's right. His first round, so hopefully he's just uh, feeling him out and seeing what his opponent comes with. But with him feeling out for this long without anything uh, pressing, he's losing this round. So let's see what he comes out for this the, the with round two. Little bit of success there. Very interesting round, first round. Banjo Corner not happy with him, he's uh, some, stern, some words. stern words. I would like to, uh, <laughs> I would like to uh, be able to hear exactly what he's been told, see if it makes a difference. Second round. Hopefully, uh, Tony starts to um, stamp his authority on the belt. Straight away on the back foot. Needs to stop pouring that jab. Tony Banjo needs to. Start sticking that jab out with some venom. Tony put himself under a bit too much pressure, just being comfortable on them ropes. He needs to fill those ropes and turn off of them. You can't be comfortable on the ropes whilst your opponent is, um, he's found his rhythm and he's now comfortable in there. Who would you give the first round to? I would give the uh, first round to Espino. Just because of work rate, he, he seemed like he, 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 was, he was pressing the fight more. Right now, Tony's definitely made a change around, turn around from the, the last round. A little bit low with his shots there, Tony. Espino, Again, oh, low with his low. shots. That was almost at the knee. Espino kind of looks like he's overcommitting to those hooks. He's sort of spinning off of them. So Tony, you're really concentrating. You can see it in the face, but he needs to throw rather than waiting. He needs to stamp his authority and push his opponent back now. Get with the jab. Stop pouring the jab and push it through. Keep that back foot on the floor when he throws that, that backhand. Beautiful body shot from Espino. That's what nice return from Tony. Now he needs to pop that jab out. Pop the jab out. Beautiful hook from Espino. Much better work rate from Tony this round. That's right. Just let him know that letting his opponent know he's still there. Game opponent. Very game. Problem is Tony uh, allowed him to get comfortable. Now he's uh, he's found his rhythm. And he's pressing the fight. Tony needs to throw more than one. He's got, he's, Espino's got a nice tight, tight guard. And good he, head movement. That's right, he's moving his head and he's keeping it close to Tony's way. Tony's the, you can see where he throws his short shots. It's, it's an arm punch rather than getting that body weight behind it. So he's getting close to him. His opponent's getting close to him, letting him commit and he returns. Espino needs to be careful because if he keeps throwing those hooks and coming off balance, Tony can really monopolize on that. That's right. 
but I think Tony's now got himself into that mode where he's waiting too much for the counter, so he's not letting off his shots quick enough when that, when those openings do appear. He needs to wake up to push that jab out or get his mind back into a fun offensive defense rather than being on the back foot and waiting for that counter. He just, his timing's just off, so the counter in isn't going to work. He needs to get more back onto the offensive defense, be aware of what he's doing, but push the fight forward, push his opponent back, letting him know he's there. Try and keep it in the center of the ring. Right now he's skirting around the outside, his back is in the ropes, he's going a bit square. He's in dangerous territory with somebody that's now found their rhythm and he's looking to land those decisive shots. Correct. Wish I could add to that, but you covered it eloquently. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. To the third round. Nice overhand attempt from Tony. Spino's so, pushing so, the, the pace. That's right. I'm, I am surprised the overhand landed. Came from too far. Now Sweeney's picking it back up because as what, Tony is keeps pulling that jab, he needs to let him know he's there. So he's he's not giving him anything to to to, to think twice about coming forward. That's right. Yeah. It feels like Espino's shot selection has become quite a lot wilder since the first round. That's right, he's now looking for those, those shots. As you can see, that Tony's head movement is minimal. So he's throwing them overhand rights and overhand lefts. He's throwing those shots wildly because he's hoping something will land because Tony's taking the full shot. When they do land, he's taking the shots full on. And now he's comfortable. He feels that he can lead with those overhands, lead with those shots. Now Espino um, jittering, giving, the, making Tony think. Because Tony's on that back foot and defense, he's moving and making him think. Thinking the shot's going to come, he's going to land that overhand. Beautiful. That setup was lovely. That's right. He went forward with the triple jab, body shot, to finish it off. That high guard that Tony has when he feels the pressure is not useful when his opponent keeps targeting the body. That's right. Chin too far up in the air, just got caught with a, a lazy jab almost. There's that overhand right he's been looking for. Didn't land, but if he keeps throwing it, he's gonna get that success. It's, it, it's almost like Tony's now in survival. I'd like to see him push the fight a bit more. That just assert his authority. Doesn't have to get into a war, but just push that jab out. Assert his authority. Let his opponent know that he's there. better from Tony but a little bit less of those the, the, the pouring shots he needs to let every shot count now because uh, if I'm to score this correctly he's, he hasn't won a round yet to know what's been, what feedback Tony is getting from the corner. He's making it out, he's, they're asking him to throw more uppercuts and to turn his body weight into those shots. Let's see if this, if this uh, comes into practice in the next round. But I would like to see them throw more jabs. meaningful jab. Fourth round. Fourth and final round? 
Scott. Scheduled for four rounds. Nice count, Lev. That's it. You need to see more of that. More meaningful shots. Recoils a little bit slow from Tony. That's where he's going to end up uh, receiving the, the counter or any return from the from Espino. From there, just need to throw that jab. Just keep him thinking. That's it. Right. Lost his balance there a little bit. Why is he overcommitted with that right? That's right. And from there, look for this. Probably jab out from there. He's in range. But he's allowing Espino to step in and be comfortable. Good shot there from from Banjas. Espino was stepping in. Both of them landed there in close quarters. Got thrown onto the canvas. Espino's getting comfortable and is certain he's authority. You see, you said that, you said just pop that jab out. And the moment that he started doing that, immediately had success. It's a shame we haven't seen more of that, really. That's right. He said, it's, it's how you control the pace. It's how you get your range. If nothing else, oh, that was a beautiful, a beautiful hook from Espino. Landed clean on Tony. Yeah. Tony's chin is too high. Taking him count unnecessarily. His, 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 his head movement is almost non-existent. He's not using his feet. As you can see, his legs are rather straight as he moves around. He's have a small bend in his knees so he can ride those shots a bit better. But he, he, his legs are straight as he's moving around. Get himself a good counter from Tony as the as the screen has walked in. He's kind of leaning forward on Espino, trying to get his shots off, That's but right. smothering That's right. his work. That's right. Nice to see him applying some pressure, I must say. But I'm not sure how effective that was. Might be too little. Too late. Okay, looks like it's a six round, a good foot. Okay. It was scheduled for, it says it was scheduled for four, but That's right. happy to see another couple of rounds of this. his authority a bit more. I was just waiting to see what he would do at the beginning of this round, but it's just been more of the same. He's a bit flat-footed there. That's what's gonna, he's going to take the full brunt of the sh any shot that has been on throw. Again, legs a little bit too straight. He needs to get those heels off the ground so he can react quicker. Referees give them a warning about the heads being too close, trying to avoid another head clash, I suppose. Yeah. 
That was a nice little slip and counter there from Tony. That's right, but again, I think he's just leaving it a little bit too late. He's playing catch up right now. Hopefully, he does enough for the judges to turn the decision around. Leaves a little bit more work. Oh, cheeky little shot from Espino to the back there. That's right, Tony. You need to keep more of the same. Just let him know you're still there. Get out from the corner. Get yourself out from the corner. You keep get the chin down. Necessary pressure. Oh. Another body. Low blow. Low Possibly blow. he's going to get a point deducted. That's that's three, possibly four in the bout. Espin is taking the knee, just recovering from that low blow. The referee's having a serious word with Tony about his shot placement, it seems. Espino's just touched his gloves together to say, I'm ready. That's right. Back Universal in. language boxing. <laughs> yes, it is. That's it. Now they're starting to trade. What he needs to do is, as, as a sprint steps back, just take that... Another low blow. Yeah, I think that point's coming now. That point deduction. You called it, Dwayne. Disappointing, disappointing. I think he's, he's getting a bit desperate. It's because he's left it a little bit too late in the bout to start showing his authority. So now he's getting a bit sloppy with his shots. Interesting round, interesting round. It was hard to split him until that, that point was deducted. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, the way that I've been scoring it so far, I would ha I'd be leaning towards Espino. Yes, definitely. Especially because of the um, earlier rounds where, where Tony wasn't committed to his shots. He was doing a, a, a far too many range finding jabs, just pouring them out. Popping that jab out, popping that jab out. Sixth and final round. Very interested to hear the results. You can hear Banjo's corner saying, Stop throwing the right if you don't mean it. There's not enough venom behind the shots. He's pouring them out too much. There we go. Better, better for Bench. But smothering his work. You That's know. right, stepping in far too early. Chin is high in the air. We're not sure what we witnessed there. A little, little back bend from Espino. Yep. Maybe he's getting a bit tight. <laughs> <laughs> it's always entertaining ringside with you, Dwayne. Hey, I'm just calling what I see. I see, see half a step back and throw some shots. He needs to work now, Tony. I see Dean White there in Tony Banjo's corner. Giving advice. And the advice is perfect advice. Saying to use the jab, put more venom behind that backhand. He said, there's no point throwing the shot if you don't mean it.
don't think he was trying to do this thing where he sort of posts and then that and then throws that backhand. I'm not sure how successful it is with the spinner. That's right, and he's um he the recoil is just a little bit slow, slow with the backhand, yeah, so slow. he's he's unable to follow up with it. Another low blow. Good body shot from Espino. Then a hook over the top. Tony needs to move that head. It's just there for the taking. Tony just tying up Espino as they got on the inside. Right. Ref referee separated them. And again, on the inside where he could have meant those shots, he's just pouring those shots. Those two hooks that he threw. Well, yeah, and they both landed and, they were right. and they, there was nothing in them. That's right. Holt. One, another low blow from Tony and Espino had landed a one-two pre previous to that. Again, he's just waiting. Tony's waiting. That's that tad just a bit long. It's making... It's, it's, just, it's making Espino comfortable and to regroup, to reset, to throw again. And to be honest, every shot that Espino throws, he means it. That's right. That's what's going to make the difference with the scoring. Absolutely. Stay tuned for the results coming up. Oh. Round seven. Round seven. Gosh. Here we were thinking it was four, then six. Looks like it's going for eight. That's what makes these nights exciting. Because what would happen is, depending on your opponent, the rounds may increase or decrease. So I, I, I'm not sure if, if, if uh, Espino was a, a, a late replacement. Doubt it with it being a... a, a it looks like it's going to be an eight rounder. But I do know that initially Tony was looking at a, a four rounds. Round seven. just hear Tony's corner saying what are you waiting for it's that's that's been the story all night he's waiting far too long giving her rounds away because when he does wake up he does land some telling shots but it's just not enough of them how old is Tony Banch do we know trusty Google 32 years old ah oh, 32 okay Is just sort of pouring at each other a little bit. That's it. Now it's going to be all about work rate at this point. It's interesting though, isn't it? Because this is where conditioning really comes in. You know, you're in round seven. You've fought a hard fight. The last however many rounds, we're not even sure at this point. It is all about your conditioning, your fitness, your heart. That's right. And being able to keep pole position, keeping your shape. Because the bandage is getting... All is a see, bit all over the place. All you can see from Banja's corner is them telling him, come forward, come forward, more, more, put that pressure on. I think that that's telling to believe that he is not winning the bout. Oh, it looks like there's been a head clash. Banja's, uh, the right side of Banja's head, it's got blood dripping down it. Good right hand from Banja. Good now right just hand. more. If he didn't step, step in with that Another right hand, he right could hand. follow up. Oh, huge shot from Espino. That's right, that's right. Wobbled Banj. Because Banj is stepping in with his head in the air. Oh. He's just trying to keep his footing now. 
Espino knows that he's a little bit in trouble. And I think he's found his feet. Another low shot, come on. Is that another point deducted? Another point deducted. Gave him a cheeky little... A little wipe. A little wipe with that towel. Get some of that blood off. Ref, ref told him, go back to the corner. Go back to the neutral corner. Yeah, the ref was on it straight away. Good job from the ref. You don't want him to give him some extra little instructions on the slide. Interesting round. Let's see what those those points have done to um, the result. The result. Right? We're yeah. all rounds. We think. Tony needs a knockout to win from my calculations. Let's see how he approaches this final round. When Tony decides to use his jab, it's so effective. He needs to be careful with those, uh, with those body shots, aiming them in the right place, trying to be more accurate with them. That's he cannot right. afford to lose another point at this stage. Oh. It looks like that was another low, low blow. He's telling him he's one more point and he's, it's a disqualification. What he needs to do is use that jab. Use that jab so he gets the position, he gets the range and the timing correctly. But he's just throwing, he's leading with those body shots and that's what's getting him off because he, he hasn't been doing enough to get his range and his timing. He just throw, he's just, he's just responding to what Espino's doing. So he needs to prop that jab out a bit more. What I would say if I was in corner, corner, to stop throwing those low blows. Stop throwing those uh, body shots. And needs to bring them round he rather than up the middle because he's not, he's not landing those body shots up the middle. He needs to bring, shot, bring body shots round and punch to the chest if he wants to go low. Punch to the chest and bring those body shots round. Espino's really going for it. He's had enough of those body shots to make sure he um, comes out this round relatively normal. <laughs> Just caught on to what you said. That was another low blow. I saw it. That was low. And the fight has been called off. The fight has been called off because of the low blows. That is something I've not seen. Well not in a professional ring for a long time very disappointing very disappointing at least they know what they need to work on in the gym well i was actually going to say you know from round one to the last round where before this got called off i think it's very clear the steps that they need to take in the gym he, he um, cannot throw body shots up the middle Espino looks in a lot of pain. Oh, he's happy. I can't, I can't quite tell. I think he's elated. And slightly in pain. It's static. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, either way, without the low blows, I do believe he deserves the win. I agree. Actually. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the official time, 1 minute and 39 seconds of round number 8. Your winner by disqualification, Lester Espino! Ladies and gentlemen, now it's time for our fifth bout of the evening. Scheduled four three-minute rounds in the super middleweight division. And now, making his way to the ring, Krista Zulgin. And now, ladies and gentlemen, his opponent making his way to the ring, Caleb Foreman! Ladies and gentlemen, this bout scheduled for four three-minute rounds in the super middleweight division. This bout is sanctioned by the British Boxing Board of Control, the timekeeper at the bell, Nick White, and the third man in charge of the action in the ring, referee Kieran McCann. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner, he is wearing the blue and white. His official weight of 166.8 pounds. He has a record of 47 fights, three draws, eight wins, and four of those wins come in by way of knockout. Hailing from Wakefield, United Kingdom, 
Kristab Zulgis. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner. He is wearing the black and gold. His official weight of 160.2 pounds. He is currently undefeated with four wins. Hailing from Carson's and Surrey United Kingdom. Caleb Foreman! an exciting fight. Yeah, much better, much better start. Nice, nice strong lead behind that jab. See it just feeling his range. Just continue, just keep pulling out the pu pushing out that jab. Pushing it out, make you think. Go twice, up and up and down. Now he's comfortable. He's got the range. You can see he's, he's a, Zogis has got a, a high guard, so now he can pop that gap, go down for beautiful. And go downstairs. That's it. So pop that jab, go downstairs, and up the top and around the side. As you can see where. Zorgis is holding his guard. Yeah, it's quite fun forward, isn't it, that That's guard? Right. I like how uh, Foreman is uh, holding the centre, popping that jab. Yeah. Just keep using the jab, Just keep it using it. That's it. Nice. Now we can start fainting a bit. He's throwing that jab consistently and he's reacting to it with the high guard. So now he can start fainting so he can land the shots that he wants to land. Good shot. Yeah, lovely jab upstairs followed by a right hand to the body. I'd like to see Foreman not take too many steps out. And then have to work his way back in. That's right. One step is enough. Just fight it at your range. Box at your range. Holding the centre, Foreman holding the centre, good work. Lovely, lovely jab to the solar plexus. Slipped underneath Zolkis' jab to deliver that. Simple round is in control. Foreman is in control. Keep controlling the pace with the bout, controlling the distance with the with the jab. Beautiful. Lovely. <coughs> Slipped the jab, came back with the left hook and the right hand. Very effective. I'm really liking the variation of defense from Foreman. That's right, that's right. He's, he's, he's exploiting Zogis. Zogis is just a tad slow and he's a bit easy to read. So he's able to be comfortable and look good in the bout, which is good. Comfortable round for Foreman. Let's see what he brings for the round two. He can step, start stepping it up as he did towards the end of that round. He can start stepping it up for uh, uh, round two. Start stepping it up. Round 
bit of mischief going on behind me. Think I was unaware. <laughs> I just even. don't react. Not even. very early on in Foreman's career but you know he's got the potential to go quite far that's right now he's, he's got a good idea the right idea in how to um, control the bout but let's see what happens when he starts to step up in competition because um, as you say he's, he's doing everything correctly nice nice good variation Nice to see, nice to see. Keeping it simple with God, keeping it simple. I was going to say, up. you know, you must be a fan because he's got that guard, that lead hand where it needs to be. The basics are being done well. I'm never a fan, but I do like how what he's doing at this <laughs> moment. <laughs> nice. That double jab followed by that right uppercut. Really nicely administered. Let's see it. Good work. Great so punch variation. If Fulmo just keep that elbow down a bit when he's throwing that jab, it'll be a bit more spike behind it because he's throwing the jabs. Venomous jabs, loads of them, but it's a bit of a flick because his elbow comes up before the jab pushes out. You just turn that fist round, keep that elbow down. Nice, solid ram, ram rub jab. Work, really finish beautiful. upstairs afterwards. Finish upstairs afterwards. Look at that lovely shot down the middle. You might not be a fan, but I am. Good. <laughs> Good work. That's it. See, what I like is Foreman's got the right idea about the jab usage. That's exactly it. Keep, it. keep it simple. As the saying goes, a jab will take you around the world. You should have to use it correctly. It's not touching, not always touching, but I can understand you vary your, your, the power you put in there from time to time. You, you, to, they're those range finding jabs or just to keep them thinking, but you need to push through as well. Make, the meat can be meaningful, get those points scored as well. That's good work from a foreman. Good pop shot there from Foreman. Finish with a left hook that would have been splendid. Really nice. Lovely round, lovely really round, nice. lovely round from Foreman. Lots of ring um, generalship and um, boxing IQ being shown. 100 First two rounds from Foreman. See if he keeps it up and then start to show that he's levels above his, his, uh, his uh, Zolgis. shots. It's right to take your time, be comfortable. He takes his time, they seem like calculated, you know, when he doesn't see an opening, he's not taking random shots just for the sake of it. That's right, you take your time, throw the shots to make the opening for the shot that you want to land. That's why he's throwing that jab. He's brought that guard up, now you, you can see you can comfortably throw that body shot to bring the shots back up again. What we were, we were. The, the, the previous bouts were lacking. Was that the use of the jab? 
We've been missing it. the jab, haven't we? We're using it correctly at least. See, that would be the time to throw that body shot as though this is square on the ropes. Up and down, very little shots now. They're going nice. to go discard it. Again, constant use of that jab, it's good. It's always trying to come back with a counter. That's just because, um, what Caleb's, Caleb's uh, doing a little, that, a bit uh, too lazy with that right hand. As he's throwing a jab, it either lifts up or it pulls down. And I think uh, Zogis has uh, noticed that. Yeah. Doesn't always come back to the face too quick either. That's right. So you see how it pulls back when he's throwing that yeah. jab? I think that's what they've noticed. Or as you say, when he's going to throw that right hand, it drops. Drops the hand before he throws it. Or he opens out when he's throwing that jab, just as he just did there. And I yeah. think that's what's making us Dogus feel he can get that count in there. So yeah, we lift that right hand with the jab. Yeah. I mean, he read Zolgus's response really well, though. Uh -huh. That's the thing, that's where you your boxing IQ comes into it. He landed the shot, think, why did that shot land? And to make that correction without going through the round, taking unnecessary punishment, that was good. Form in the building by trade. Hope to uh, give up the building work, concentrate on the boxing. Total control as we go into the next round. I, I would like to see Foreman uh, kind of step round his opponent now. It's like using, uh, using some angles. For the Start to have a bit more fun now in the final round. He's winning clearly, and there's not. Zogis, he doesn't seem to have anything to, uh, to trouble Foreman, so uh, let's have a bit more fun and just show what he can do. Up and down, vary them shots, change the levels, and make semicircles around around Zogis when he goes onto that rope. Fourth and final round. That would have been a good time to administer some body shots. That's right, that's right. But to be fair, possibly he's thinking, I'm the, I've, I've won the bout, let me just take it easy. But uh, I would like to see... Is that the punch. right attitude to have? Well, I mean, I guess, own, in a way. Own, but um, I would like to see him win conclusively. This is a four-rounder. You're starting your career off just to show, to show what you're about. Yeah. So it, it would be nice. Step up to the plate. Not that he hasn't done that, he's well, obviously it, done that. It, it, it sometimes could be a bit difficult when you've got a fight that's become so cagey. This this round, Zogis isn't isn't doing anything so far. Yeah, it's really tricky when your opponent's gone into negative to try and draw them out. Good shot punch with three guys. Three guys, now go downstairs. That's all you need to do, go downstairs, because he was square, he would have taken the, the full shot. I think um, the canvas is wobbling. I don't know what the footwork.
I'd say for some threes and fours now, because Ozogas isn't doing anything, so he can have his way. Do, he could, yeah. Do, do exactly what he wants. Up and down, bring the shots, run downstairs, where uh, Zogas has got a high guard. With that same venom, he's bringing it up. It, it's a bit too much head time. I think you could get rid of Ogus, to, to be honest. It's interesting, because I feel like it's only come about in the fourth round. Earlier throughout this bout, he's really landed body shots effectively. Uh -huh. Good bout for, good bout for uh, Caleb for Well, it much did much to say there. Caleb was uh, in full control. It's good to see. for the, the official announcement as uh, surely that's four, four rounds to zero for Caleb Foreman. Ladies and gentlemen, after four rounds of boxing, we go to the referee scorecard. Referee Kieran McCann scores the bout 40 to 36 and your winner Caleb Foreman! So good to see you back in action, Caleb. How are you feeling after that fantastic performance? Yeah, I feel great, I feel sharp, and just feel good to be back, just active, you know. What did you make of your opponent? Obviously, you know, he was quite a negative opponent in, in some instances, but your ring generalship was really, really pleasing to see. What did you make of him? Yeah, he's a good opponent, but you just got to keep calm when someone wants to do that. When they want to work, how they want to work, you just got to push them that extra bit, you know? So, you just got to know when to up it and down it, you know? Dean, obviously we saw Caleb out last time on the show. What do you make of him as a boxer? Do you know what? This is a second good performance, or great performance, I could say, because obviously he was inactive for a while. Um, now we're gaining momentum. You know, the world's his oyster, man. Another good, strong performance. And all you can do is go from strength to strength. Another thing, he's coming down from a bigger weight. So eventually, when he gets to his natural weight, he's going to be bigger, stronger than the guys he's facing this guy i've seen quite tall you know so eventually he's going to be able to impose his strength and maybe get a great stoppage but skill set for skill set we're saying some good movement good stuff in there and we just need to keep that momentum and hopefully down the line shortly we should be knocking on the southern area and titles hopefully later in the year or next year yeah i mean in terms of obviously you know your ring iq and your defense the beautiful footwork really lovely trunk defense what are, you, uh, what are your plans for the rest of the year? How many more bouts would you like to be on? I'd like to get as active as I can. If any throw comes up, I'm going to jump at it, you know? I just want to get out, get active, get the numbers up, and head for big stuff. 
I don't want to push it too fast. I just want to go at the right pace. Do you know what I mean? Now, I want to say a big thank you to all my sponsors. Judge Driving School, Savage Scaffolding, Beardo Media. And I've got a fucking former refurbisher. It's my dad's company. And I've got another one just come on board, PCC Contracting. So I'm getting sponsors. It's helping me through the training. So that's all I can say. Thank you to them. And yeah, they're the ones who will put me through the training. Because otherwise I'd have to work. And I mean, according to Dean, a really exciting future for you. And we can't wait to see it. Thank you. And I thank Dean for putting on a great show again. And I thank you. And yeah, hopefully many more to come. Well, ladies and gentlemen, just want to take your attention just for a few moments. Got one or two items of boxing memorabilia that they've asked me to uh, auction off this evening. Starting this one, this is old school, ladies and gents. Ken Buchanan, going back to the day, 70s and 80s, in a frame, all signed up. Really nice little piece. All the money going to a good cause. Let's whiz this out as quick as we can, ladies and gents. Somewhere in the room, start me off at uh, 30 pounds somewhere. Ken Buchanan. Somewhere in the room, anybody start me off. I need some help looking out here, mate. Anybody out in the room, give me a scream loud if you're interested. Got one at the top of the room up there. Got 30 pounds up there, could do with a bit more. Anywhere else in the room, it's really hard to see with these lights on. Anywhere else in the room, give me a scream. Yeah, I didn't mean just to scream, I meant raise your arm as well and make a few quid out of it. Are you bidding, are you, my love? Or do you just want to go to the toilet? Okay. All right, we've got 45 pounds there, 45 pounds. 60 pounds at the top, 60 pounds. I'm going to let this one go cheap. 60 pounds, Ken Buchanan. I'm sure I can let it go for that. Can I six? Can you like to come down and see us at ringside? You've just bought yourself a nice piece. Just tell them at ringside you're coming down to pay for a piece, so we'll do it right now. Cash your card, ladies and gents. Want to whiz through this so we can get the boxers back in the ring and so I can go home again. Second piece. You may recognise this. Probably one of the greatest... Oh, it's a, a football piece. One of the greatest footballers ever to grace the Greens. Goes by the name of Pelé. But this is actually signed by someone called Peter Beardsley. England, Newcastle, Liverpool, played for everybody. Straight away, anywhere in the room, going to give me £50 for this. Signed by Peter Beardsley, a photograph of him with Pelé. Need someone quick, otherwise I'm going to move it straight on. Anywhere in the room, going to give me a shout. Signed by Peter Beardsley with Pelé. Nope, we're going to move it on. This man, I guarantee you, you would have heard of. One of Britain's greatest heavyweights. Actually nicked his world title from Oliver McCall. Land of hope and glory. Fantastic event. Fantastic evening. None other than Britain's own Mr. Frank Bruno. Signed in a case. Need to start me off somewhere in the room. £100 is where I need to go. 
Anywhere in the room. I've got £100 to my left-hand side. I would like to take a bit more if I can. £100 signed by Frank Bruno. Nice glove in a case. £100. Anywhere. Make a lot of noise. Need to need a lot of noise. 125. No, 110. Fuck, I've got, I've got home to get to. 110. I've got a bit more. 110 I've got. Looking for a bit more. 120. 120 I've got. 120 I've got. 120 at ringside. 125. Jesus Christ, I'll go up in pennies in a minute. 140. 140 pounds. 140 pounds. He's just kicked you straight in the nads, son. He's giving it to you large, going up in fivers. 140 pounds. Make some noise somewhere. Give me a scream. 140 pounds. 140 pounds. I need a lot of noise. 150 I've got. 150 I've got. 150 over to my right hand side. 150 pounds. 150. So 150 against you. 160 I've got. 160. I'm going to let it go. 160 once. 170. 170 I've got. He's looking at his, he's checking his wallet. He's counting his cash. 200 pounds, 200 pounds. He said, is that a bid or is that, tell him how he can have it. 210. 210 I've got. 210, 210. 210 once. It's twice at 210 pounds. Signed by Frank Bruno. Soul, you got it mate. Come and see us at ringside. Get yourself over here now. Come and see us at ringside. Up through the middle there. Rog is on his way to you. Come through me, old mate. Walk down there pretending you're a boxer. Fantastic. If you go round to the side there, Roger will sort you out. Thank you so much. Give him a round of applause. Well done, fella. Well, this really nice canvas. Pound for pound. One of the greatest boxers of all time. Roy Jones Jr. Anybody knows anything about their boxing, they know this man. Quality beyond belief. Start me off somewhere in the room at 80 pounds anywhere. Roy Jones Jr. signed canvas. Somewhere in the room, start me at 80 pounds. Signed by Roy Jones Jr. I'm looking at the VIP section. I might as well be looking at the moon. Nothing's happening over there. They're going, sod off. We're paying for champagne tonight. Got 80 pounds anywhere. I've got 80 pounds. I've got 80 pounds. I could do with a little bit more. It, it might, I've, got, I've got 90 pounds. I've got 90 pounds. I've got 90 pounds. I've got 100 pounds. 100. 100 pounds I've got. 100 pounds. Anywhere else in the room? I will let it go. 110. 110. 120 I've got behind you. So you two guys there. 120 at the back there, 120 I've got, 120, 120, I will let it go for that, 120 pounds, it's going once, 120 pounds going twice, 130 pounds, 150, 150 pounds, he's stuck two fingers up to you lot, you are out of the water, 150 pounds to my right hand, 160, he's come back in, he's just checked his wallet, he knows he's sleeping in the spare room tonight, 170, 170 pounds, 170, 170 pounds we're at, 170 pounds once, 170 pounds twice, all in. 180 I've got, 180 I've got, 180, 180, 190, 190, 190. You listen, you're eating food mate, you must have money in your pocket. 190 pounds I've got, 190. 190 pounds, I will let it go for that. Is someone going to make it 200 pounds? 200 pounds and I'll stuff it straight in your pocket. One, 200 pounds! 200 pounds once. 200 pounds twice. 210. 200, oh, come on, I'm getting tired here. 210. 210. 220. 220. Are we going to go for the Chinese dentist? 230. 230 pounds. 250! They are taking the piss over here now. 250 pounds from the consortium. There's about 15 of them. They've all put their pocket money together. It's the ugliest boy band I've ever seen. Look at them over there. 250 pounds I've got. 250 pounds. 250 once. 250 twice. All in. Fair warn. You just bought it, pal. 
Give me a huge round of applause, make your way to the front. Don't worry, mate, I've got 15 more in the car, I'll sort you one out. No, I'm joking. Woo! What have we got now? Wow. This one cannot go cheap. Signed again by one of my favourite boxers. Hall of Famer. Great one of pound for pound, best of all time. Again, Roy Jones Jr. signed glove in a case. I know what these go for. Straight away, I need someone to start me off at 150. Signed by Roy Jones Jr. Signed glove in a case. Anywhere in the room. Going to start me off. I've got it over there. I've got 150. I've got 150 straight away. 150. I'll need a little bit more if I can. A signed glove. Roy Jones Jr. 150. He's going to nick it for 150. Surely not. 150 pounds over to my left hand side. Signed by Roy Jones Jr. 150. Rog, can I let it go for that? 150. I will. I will, I'll, all in I will promise you first time at 150 second time at 150 your third your final chance you bought it for one oh no he just put his hand up 160 at the death 160 no 150 I'll let you have it 150 mate job done come and get it. come on in Quick as you can. Is he old enough to be in here? Does your mum know you're out this late? Fucking hell. <laughs> What's going on? They <laughs> let anybody in here, don't they? What a lovely venue this is. Okay, ladies and gents, this is probably the marquee piece this evening. Signed trunks by uh, one of the greatest of all time. One of the middleweights from the 80s. You had four or five of them knocking about Antifermo, Tommy Earns, Hands of Stone himself. This man, Sugar Ray Leonard. Ray Leonard himself. Beat my man Marvin Agler as well. Broke my heart, that did. I know what these are worth. I've got to start at £200. It's a lovely piece. They're just about the right size to get through a hatch into your loft as well if you get fed up with them. Somewhere in the room, anywhere going to start me at £200. Signed by Sugar Ray Leonard. Probably one of the greatest of all time. Sugar Ray Leonard. If we can't rate the 200 Okay. No one's interested in it. Ray Leonard, I can't believe it. What? 200 pounds? 200 pounds? Rog, can I let it go for 200 pounds? I can't see him. Rog, I need to get through this. Can I do it for 200? He says 220 and you can have it. I don't care if you're going home. 220 and it's yours, he just said. No, you're going down. It's got nice no, 200, 220 is what he said. Thanks for the offer anyway. This is the last one. Finishing with a football piece. One of the greatest guys I've ever had the chance to, to interview. He's such a nice fella. Paul Gazza Gascoigne. Probably the greatest footballer we've ever, ever produced in this country. Shirt signed from the Italian 90. Once again, we need to start top of the shop, anywhere in the room, looking for 180 quid to get me going. 180, somewhere in the room. Anywhere in the room. Signed by Paul Gascoigne. If we can't get it going, we're going to get the boxers back because they're ready in the dressing rooms. They're warmed up. They're ready to go. We've got no football fans in. I think we're going to let that go, girls. That's the last piece, is it? The very last piece. Last chance anywhere. Signed by Paul Gascoigne. Reserve is 190. 190 quid. You've got it, mate. Come and see us at ringside. I'm not even going to muck about. Wander yourself down, you've just bought a piece. 
Ladies and gents, that is just about a lot for the auction. Best of luck to the rest of the boxers. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Ladies and gentlemen, now it's time for our next bout of the evening scheduled for three minute rounds in the lightweight division. And now, making his way to the ring, Christian Narvaez. And now, ladies and gentlemen, his opponent making his way to the ring, Harry Carson!
Ladies and gentlemen, this bout scheduled for four three-minute rounds in the lightweight division. This bout is sanctioned by the British Boxing Board of Control. The timekeeper at the bell, Nick White, and the third man in charge of the action, referee Mark Bates. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner. He is wearing the red, black, and white. His official weight of 136.4 pounds. He has a record of 76 fights, 6 draws, 17 wins, and two of those wins come in by way of knockout. Hailing from Venice, Italy, Christian Norve! And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner. He is wearing the red and black. His official weight of 134.6 pounds. He has a professional record of three fights, two losses, and one win. Hailing from Huddleston, Hertfordshire, United Kingdom, Harry Carson! Short little break, little auction. And we are set to go with a fight in the lightweight division. Quick start from Karzis. That's what I like to see. I like to have that left hand up a little bit, but. Um, Good dominant and assertive start. I know I'm old fashioned, but it's a bit too early to <laughs> <laughs> have the risks there. I think I'm, that was I'm a record, ladies and gentlemen. 20 seconds into the bout. I'm, I, 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 listen, I'm a, I'm a low risk. Low operator. risk, high reward. A low risk operator. You start doing them little things there later on because the, what you do is you revert back to salt if you if you give that hand down for too long get comfortable with it there when you get under pressure that hand's going to stay there so if you start if you get used to that point of reverting it back to where it's a, where it's traditionally supposed to be you can drop your hands and then what will happen is if you do find yourself under pressure it's going to go back to where it's supposed to be rather than that be your default Also, maybe also, you know, be wiser to get a range on your opponent first, you know. Exactly. But he's in control of the bat. He's holding centre of the ring, he's popping out that jab out nicely. He's cutting the ring off, he's making sure that you're, you know, he could cut off a little bit better, but he's, he's keeping him on. He's keeping his opponent on the ropes. He's following him a little bit. There we go. That's what I like to see. Just stepping over. Got exactly. Working well. That's it. Good work. Keeping him at the end of the fist. His opponent's not giving him too much to worry about. Oh. Is in uh, total control. Causes with total control until um, he's taking a necessary shot. Didn't trouble him, but uh, as he steps up through the ranks, that could be a, something that turns the whole bout around. Touch and he's going to put a shot in behind in the moment. Here we go. Looks like I know a bit about boxing. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like I know a bit about boxing, said Mr. Sinclair. Yeah, you're not wrong, you do. Lovely round, lovely opener for Kazi's.
Let's see how what he does to improve in round two. Is he going to close the show early? It looks possible. He's in total control. Just a it's difficult bit though with these season sort of journeyman types, isn't it? That's right. That's where you need to you need to disguise the shot that you want to land. As he he's um opponent is a bit soft around the midsection, but he's a, he is slightly shorter, so it's going to be a bit harder to land those body shots. So he just need, does need to um keep them those hands up. As you can see, he has already got a high guard because of the success of that jab in the early round. Yeah, he's got a high guard, but he also seems to be protecting his frame. Maybe he's got a smaller midsection in terms of, you know, the length of it. Well, as I say, because he's, um, he's already short, it just it doesn't take much to completely cover it up for him. Yeah. As you can see small movements, or if, or if he does dip a bit, it, it, it's totally covered. So it is difficult. He's got to open him up. What he possibly needs to do is uh, draw the counter to counter the counter, and then he will get the... Um, the success he's looking for. The Uno reverse card counter. Pardon me? Sorry, maybe it's for the young people. Uh, no. That <laughs> it's a young person saying this, right? is, this is not a game, it's not cards. Keeping <laughs> 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 keep him on them ropes. Shot selection there. That's right. But my vase is uh, good at keeping the uh, cars is unsettled. He's moving, keeping that semicircle moving to try and keep him offset so he doesn't get to sink them shots. In. guard is proving quite effective for um, the red corner. Well, what he needs to do is to throw that jab and, and, and direct him to the shot that he wants to do. So pour it a little bit more to the left to make him go to the wall to the right. Fade and get that right, get throw that right in. All, all the same again, just direct him a little bit, pop a bit more of that right and get him towards the left and you can throw that left hook over, up or down because as you see when he's moving his guard is quite high yeah so you need to direct him to where you want to go rather than following so what you could do is move, move left and throw right as he moves to the left, he's going to step over to his left or right hand. Direct him to where he's going to go. Or vice versa. Move right and throw left. You're doing a bit about boxing, aren't you? Just a tenth. <laughs> Good round. Be interested to know what they're saying in, in Kazi's corner. How they're going to improve it, because as I say, he's not doing anything uh, what we could say is wrong, but it is hard to break the um, the the barrier that That's right, yeah. the opponent has put up. A bit more calculated pressure. Oh. See, with that left hand is low, he ended up taking up. Sure, that really didn't need to land. 
Yeah, he needs to be be careful when he's standing straight in front of his opponent like that. That's right. Better positioning because he was going a little bit square with that when right, he throws yeah. that uh, backhand. So from there, you just need to keep popping, just keep popping them shots out. From there, he's waiting. Yeah, it's important, you know, offset that rhythm. That's right. So now what you need to do is as as the opponent comes in to hold, I'll say that's where you need to take a little step back and throw the uppercut. Do well cut through the middle because he's a smaller man and he's dipping down. Punch to his chest. And then down. bit of a waste of vulnerable position he had his opponent in there to throw the shots so a little bit too much head hunting he needs to be up and down so he's it's harder to, to to figure out his rhythm Nice shot selection from Narvaez. There we go. Keep him off it. That's it. Then down and bring it back up again. Touching a little bit too much. I'd like to see a bit more body weight behind the shots now. Because he, he, he's had uh, Narvaez in a, a few um, vulnerable positions, but he's just touching. Capitalised on That's them. That's right. Interesting head movement from Narvaez to finish off that round. Knows how to survive. He does. Going into round three. Four. Going to round four. Interesting stuff. I must have been asleep. <laughs> well, Kaz is in total control. Complete control from Kazis. Good work from you. Good work. It's been a bit more spiteful with the jab. I believe he, he could have, um, as I say, he has got a solid guard, but I think a bit of variation rather than straight shots all night, I think he could have got rid of um, Nevaez. He does present those body shots as he leans forward with that high guard, it, op it opens up the body. He does it, uh, as he leans forwards, half a step back. Uppercut and uh, left hook to the body. It's, it's there for the taking. Cutting off the ring. That's right. Good work. 
just, just landing them shots, get busy. Go to sleep a little bit, he ends up taking an unnecessary shot because again, it's where your opponent isn't doing much. You can then find yourself uh, uh, relaxing, so you've got to be switched on. Not get complacent. The entire, the fight, the entire fight, that's right. Toe to toe in front of us. Good work, uh, defending at those returns from uh, Neves. Nice lay back. I like to see him just return shots quicker. That's it. Good work. That's it. Good work. I think he probably heard me. I know a little bit about boxing. Good. That's good work. There we go. Oh, that's that. nice. Good left foot. Get off the rope, Cardis, and be back in control. Good work. Good work. Nice, comfortable ring for Cardis. Got them rounds under the belt. Good to see uh, Cardis starting off fast. In the previous bouts, I've seen him uh, a bit too uh, uh, relaxed when he's looking for the the counters. But this time, he, he, he pressed the pace, stayed in control. A bit be a better calculated pressure. He did take a few. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, after four rounds of boxing, we go to the referee scorecard. Referee Mark Bates scores the bout. 39 to 37, and your winner, Harry the Hurricane Corses. Well done, Harry. Great performance. How are you feeling? I'm feeling really great. Uh, it's my pro debut today against a tough opponent. I want to thank everyone that came and support me here. The car was brilliant. And into the next one. Yeah, you had such great support in the building. Shout out to your supporters. How did that help you in the ring? It did help me. Um, I'm a hometown kid. So, like I said, um, it, it means the world to me. The scorecards obviously had you winning the majority of the rounds. They had you losing one round. Which round do you think it was that you lost? I didn't think so. I lost any round, to be honest with you. But it is what it is. So we, we step into the next one. Like I said, we keep training and grinding. Pro debut. Dean, what did you make of it? Yeah, it looks like he's a skillful young man. And, um, you know, me and Harry's been meeting quite a lot lately. Um, I told him, <laughs> my man Harry, man, listen. Very nice, respectful young man, Mr. Dean. He always, you know, what I mean, we've been linking. I'm happy that he got himself off the ground, winning. This man's a decorated amateur, and he showed today that there's a bit of experience. I saw a little bit of poise, a little bit of patience. He wasn't over eager. He's still got obviously his early days as his debut, but it's a good starting point. He's got to go back to the drawing board with his team, and they'll come again. You know, I don't know. He's just got to gain momentum and do his thing. Like he said, he was in there with someone durable, tough. But look, 
this is the game. Sometimes you get a real tough cookie. Sometimes you crack the egg and you get on, you get them out of there. You know what I mean? But look, he, it's early. Big up Harry. He done well tonight. He's got a good fan base today. Big up Harry's fan base. Come on, guys. Let's say something for Harry, man. Come on, guys. Thank you, boys. I love you so much. Thank you. Also, hey, a big thanks to my sponsors. Without them, we know it would have been really hard. They keep me on my toes. I really appreciate that. Thank you, guys. It was a wonderful performance. Dwayne, what did you make of it? Yeah, as you say, it's a good performance. Um, just a um, bit of criticism would be just to um, look at the successes because he had some beautiful success in there, but he didn't capitalise. So see what works and just do it again rather than going back admiring to... Your work. The, exactly. Yeah. Going back to what was... Going back, taking a step back and admiring your work and then going back to those straight shots. What was working, just repeat it again because I think he could have got rid of that opponent. Difficult, but I think he could have done it. Harry, very, very exciting to see you in your pro debut in the ring. We look forward to seeing much more of you in 2023. Thank you very much. See you soon, guys. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, now it's time for our seventh bout of the evening. Light heavyweight action, and now making his way to the ring, the Nastoyanov. And now, ladies and gentlemen, his opponent making his way to the ring, Ernie Ladies and gentlemen, this bow scheduled for six three-minute rounds in the light heavyweight division. This bout is sanctioned by the British Boxing Board of Control, timekeeper at the bell, Nick White, and the third man in charge of the action, in the ring, referee Kieran McCann. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing to you first, Fighting out of the red corner, he's wearing the red with white trim. His official weight of 169 pounds. He has a professional record of 17 fights, three wins, and one of those wins come in by way of knockout. Hailing from Sofia, Bulgaria, the Nastoyanov. 
and his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner he is wearing the white and silver his original weight of 170 pounds bang on he is currently undefeated with two wins and one of those wins come in by way of knockout hailing from sit cup london united kingdom Ernie break his back a few years ago in a car accident. Went up to over 18 stones in time. Got back in the ring, into the gym and uh, got back in shape and here we are. Loving these facts and figures you're pulling out tonight, do You know a bit about boxing, Just don't a you? bit, yeah. <laughs> Says he wants to put a uh, box at a high level, so he's, he's here to make a statement. He does like to tuck up a little bit in previous bouts. He's tricky with the jab and throw that hard right hand. But he's not, he's not tucking up at all today, he's, he's, he's taking control. Good, good, work. good work here from um, Rutherford. He's got a lot of support here in the building tonight, you can hear it. That's right, that's right. So if he's going to praise his, his supporters, we work like start to get that jab back and the recoil a little bit quicker because he's, he's taking shots as he's coming in. But again, he's still in control. Good work. Seems to be quite susceptible to um, a lot of what his what his opponent is throwing at him. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just a bit uh, static with the head movement. His, his legs are straight, so what's that going to make him be a little bit slow when it's time to react? Bend the knees a bit and take the take them heels off the ground and be able to uh, react a bit quicker. His guard is a little bit lazy, so he's, he's, his opponent is punching forward. But it's, uh, it's, the opponent doesn't like the power that... Uh, Robert Ford is displaying, so he's not throwing as much as he should. He's just uh, he's happy to cover up. Yeah, I mean, you know, visibly just looking at the two, it's clear who's got the power. You know, Rutherford is visibly larger than... Uh, good shot, good shot. Up and down variation from Rutherford. Lovely, yeah. Uh, to if he followed up with that backhand, that would have been a, a nice display for his, his supporters. He's having a good time tonight. He's throwing what he, what he wants. He's throwing his shots up and down. Good, good first round for Rutherford, but as you pointed out, the, the head movement did improve towards the end of the round. Can he keep it up? But he did take a few very unnecessary shots during that round, but again, in total control. I'm just wondering if perhaps he doesn't respect his opponent's power. Well, hopefully he wouldn't be that naive, because at light heavyweight, he takes his one shot. if there were any adjustments made for the second round. Ten seconds. 
Second up, round two. So if he did pop that jab out, he's still waiting, he's pop that jab out, be in control. And sink that backhand into the body. Straight backhand into the body because opponent is slightly square you know he does appear to be in 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 his boxing stance but he is slightly square Jab waiting a little bit too long, that's it, good work, good work. What I like to see is after he's thrown his shots, he's moving his head a little bit from Rutherford. He, 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 he stands still, his head is in the same spot, he needs to take, just take it off the centre line. Good work, yeah, good work. Yeah, definitely got caught up in the, uh, the fire. Yeah. Oh, and he's down. Is he going to beat the count? And the uh, fight's been pulled off. Round two. Good work. Very good work. I mean, he was obviously dominating that performance. You know, he was right. stalking him throughout the entire fight. That's right, that's right. Good work. Keep it nice and simple. Seeing what was worked and he just repeated it. With an official decision. Keeping it nice and simple, that's what I like to see. Breaking it down, variation of shots, up and down, headshots, body shots. Bringing him round the side when necessary. Control the battle of the jab. Good work. Wait for the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, the official time, 1 minute and 27 seconds of round number 2. Your winner by TKO, Ernie Wow, you did not disappoint. Second round, how are you feeling? I'm over the moon, yeah, I'm buzzing for that. Um, been working a lot in the gym, you know, and slowing down, like picking the shots a bit better. Uh, I think my last fight, I rushed it a bit, so, you know, I was practicing in the gym, like I say, uh, sitting down, picking the shots better, and I, it showed off tonight, you know, it worked, so. It was an incredibly dominating performance. I mean, right from the first bell, you were stalking him, you were, as you say, picking your shots. Um, 
obviously, you know, you, you normally fight a super middleweight, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I mean, I was, I was two pound over super middleweight uh, weighing in for this fight, so, yeah, I don't know why they rule it, uh, uh, like every year. Yeah, I was just wondering if that's going to be your new weight, but you're actually going to be fighting at super middle. Super middleweight, yeah, yeah, super middleweight. What did you make of your opponent? Uh, yeah, you know, um, yeah, I've got a lot of respect for him, you know. Uh, he come a long way, he put up a good fight, but uh, the better man won on the night, so, yeah. But I've, a, a big respect to him and his team for coming over, you know, and giving it a crack. But like I say, the better man won on the night. I mean, you have so much support in this building. Team Rutherford, where are you at? That is an insane amount of support. What does it mean to you? Oh, and it's unbelievable, you know? I mean, with the cost of living at the moment and things, like, a, lot, a lot of people hasn't got the money to come to these events and put it on, you know? So they support me so much and it means so much to me, for them, everyone here, you know, watching me chase my dream and, uh, you know, and thank Dean for, for putting on the uh, an amazing, amazing show here. Uh, can't wait. I mean, I'm looking forward to boxing again. I look for boxing for Dean again. So, yeah. Big future. Dean, what did you make of it? You know, we've got to give these guys credit. Ernie's fans are amazing. I thought Harry's were good, but these guys have outdone Harry's guys. And you know what I mean? Listen, that was explosive. Tonight we've had a bit of a stalemate. Mixed reviews, a disqualification, a draw, and finally we've got a effing knockout. So bad is swearing. But at least we can end the night early because we're, we're finishing them off. But look, he, he had great poise. That was what was showing to me tonight. The poise, the patience, especially round one. He was just right there tippy-toeing, stalking him. I was, like, I was watching, I was like, mm. And then his manager was like, don't worry, Dean, he'll be out of here by three. I was like, hmm, you sure? And then he was like, trust me. And then in round two, he'd done the business. And it was a good stoppage because he was working downstairs, coming upstairs, throwing through the middle. It's still early in this man's career. It's a pleasure for us to have him and his fans. He's been great. His old man, Ernie, senior head of the man. We've always got to give credit to everyone. But, you know what I mean? He's done the job tonight. And we're, we, you know, we're, we're welcoming back here. Obviously, April, we're going to be here. We're going to have a big card. We're going to have the IBF international title maybe a commonwealth and so on so it's going to be a big card in april so maybe he'll come back then but we'll talk to his team and we'll have a look but this year black box global mean absolute business and you know what i mean we want good guys who are going to do good knockouts and bring fans who are going to raise the roof off of this toll worth building so credit to old ernie man team rutherford Ernie, we are really, really looking forward to seeing what the future has in store for you. Yeah, thank you very much. I really appreciate it.
Ladies and gentlemen, now it's time for our eighth bout of the evening. Scheduled for three minute rounds in the super middleweight division. And now, making his way to the ring, Vasif Mamadov.
And now, ladies and gentlemen, his opponent making his way to the ring, Oli Edwards! Ladies and gentlemen, this bout scheduled for four three-minute rounds in the super middleweight division. This bout is sanctioned by the British Boxing Board of Control, the timekeeper at the bell, Nick White, and the third man in charge of the action, referee Mark Bates. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner, he's wearing the black trunks, his official weight of 167 pounds. He has a record of 38 fights, three draws, and three wins. Hailing from Southampton, United Kingdom, Vasif Mamadov! And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner. He is wearing the black and red. His official weight of 165.4 pounds. He is currently undefeated with seven wins. And two of those wins come in by way of knockout. Hailing from Kent, United Kingdom. Oliver Edwards! Wow, that fight started with a bang. Clean right shot. Good right hand there. Settle down a little bit more. He's, he's, he's doing the right thing, but he's just uh, rushing his shots. Loading up a little bit too much. Good jab there from Edwards. Good, he settled down a little bit. Now he's going to start picking his shots better. Start using that boxing brain. Looks like he really packs a punch. Nice jab there from Edwards. Nice jab there from Edwards. Like always controlling the pace of the jab. Nice stiff jab. Nice to see him vary the power behind his punches. That's right, that's right. If you load up a little bit too much too early, then they uh, start to get used to it. But there's a bit of damage from on the nose of the opponent. As a slap. Nice, Steph Jabs are really taking his toll on their opponent. 
sees a bit of damage to the nose. That's it, variation of shots. from Ed Rizzo is to get that, that right hand up a bit. He took a left, a left hook. Unnecessary, yeah. Good. Glad you started to see. <laughs> Fine, please. <laughs> Good left hook from uh, Edwards. <laughs> lovely first round, lovely open up. Let's see if he's going to capitalise on that success in round two. Great de determination to, to succeed in boxing. Oliver Edwards actually uh, gave up his home. So he's homeless for a little while. To continue uh, pursuing his dream. Wow. Possibly to hold back on expenses, I believe, because of his early career to get uh, the sponsors and uh, get a name for yourself it is it is quite costly and if you're not breaking even if it's something that you believe in that's good on him so i hope he does a have that success that he's, he's determined to be wow that's impressive it's a lot of lot of determination nice jab controlling the pace on the pace, he's not moving out too far, just half a step back, step back, so he can have a look at his opponent. There it is. And as he's then he starts getting comfortable, he can start putting together. I like that he's boxing in twos, twos, and threes. Nice jab. Pouring from the head of his opponent. A little bit of a head clash, of accidental. It's got to have an impact on a boxer psychologically. Of course, if the blood is trickling down into your eyes, trickling down your forehead, and, and, and uh, with, your, with your body temperature rising, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be free flowing, so it could appear worse than what it is. Mm. So it could be worrying for the, for the person who's got the actual cut. We're going to need a poncho. Good work on the inside there from uh, Edwards. He's got to watch the shots a little bit low, but it was on the belt, so it's fine by the ref. Yeah, both boxers have to watch their head for any additional damage. Lovely, lovely shot there. Good variation up and down with the shots. I think he's going to get rid of his opponent at this point. Opponent Point's is clutching hold of him. Shot. Looking for that uppercut as the, the opponent dips low. He wants to stop the bout by the looks of it. Yeah, he's six to, to the corner. Not sure if the corner took any heed of. I think because the, the cut's not actually in a, in a threatening position. But if, if the box is uncomfortable and he's worried about well, it, then right. he's not gonna he's not gonna perform to best of his ability and it can become dangerous it at that can. point. Yeah, it's I mean it's boxing, right? Yeah. Smile from Edwards on the inside. Not sure what that was about. I think he's, he's just been comfortable yeah, he's with that. Enjoying he's enjoying himself. himself. You know, total control. And he's having a, having a good time, relaxing of his boxing. Yes. Yeah, he's, uh, shaking his head. Shaking his head. No, I think he wants to call it quits. I don't think he wants to 
possibly causing him more damage. The doctor's having a look. The doctor's having a good look at that cut. Allowing it to continue. Doctors allowing it to continue. It's an interesting one, isn't it? If the boxer has exhibited that he doesn't doesn't want to continue. Well, I think he probably was just telling them to make sure you have a good look at it because he, his body language now doesn't seem as though he doesn't want to be in the bout. Back in the bout, the, the, the cut. I think he's, he's confident with the corner and what the doctor has said, so he's uh, back in the bout. But he is coming in with his head, so he, he, he is going to um, cause more damage rather than protect him. So chin down, have that guard up, and he popped his jo pop his jab out, give um, Edwards something to think about. But Edwards is again is in total control. He's dipping his head, allowing Edwards to actually throw shots on that cut. Nice right hand from Edwards. Total control. I like the way he's, he's keeping the, his opponent on the end of his jab, keeping him at his range. So he's in total control. As he steps forward, you see the half a step back. Always half a step back. So he's at his range. He doesn't allow him to get to smuggle his work. As he steps in, you'll see Edwards takes half a step back. The end of his shots. Really you can see everything. Selection from Edwards, that's actually. right. That's right. You can see why he was uh, selected at Ox to come to work for um, to Dylan White's camp. I really enjoy. Oh dear. Good lead for Edwards. So. As, as the ref stepped back, he's back on him. Yeah, there was a few low blows in there. I know it's accidental, but the ref's got a good eye. It was not allowing him to breathe. He's staying on top of him. It's good work here. Lovely lead right from Edwards. I'd say a bit more head movement from Edwards. We're just taking a few shots that, that are needless. And uh, chin is a little bit hard, just a little bit. But he's in total control. Jane, you know where, from where I'm sat, I just don't feel like the red corner's in this fight anymore. No, he's in, he's in total control, 100%. And it's raining blood. <laughs> Need a poncho at ringside. Yeah, we had a bit of blood splatter. Looks like something out of CSI over here. Lucky it didn't uh, land on the attire. Just the, the skin and narrowly, a bit of paperwork. Narrowly <laughs> escaped you. <laughs> Lovely work for Bibbles. Total control. If they did want to pull out at this point, you could, you, you could have battered an island. But he's got a warrior spirit and he wants to stay in there because... Lovely bump of the fist with the boxers, nice show of respect. Final round. Total control. Nice variation of shots up and down. Beautiful. 
beautiful jab. I know he's not got much to worry about, but I'd like to see uh, bring that jab back up because he's, he's after he's thrown the jab, where he's bringing it back to his chest. That's right. As he starts to climb the ranks, um, they're going to wait for that jab to throw that overhand. Yeah, very much open to that. Jabs in the opponent near. Good work up and down from Edwards. Good recoil from that right hand there. Lovely right hand lead. Right, I see a left hook after that. There we go, good work, good work. You can see the opponent's fading. I think he could get the stoppage in this round. Just up, up the pressure just a little bit. Good right hand. Yeah, I think the red corner's just surviving at this point. Looking for his heart, though he's still still doing what he needs to do. See, well, he needs to get he needs to get paid. He's probably scheduled for a few more bouts this month. He doesn't want to get stopped, so then that will put him out for a, a month to uh, uh, 45 days. We're just gonna scooch our chairs back a little bit. Good work. Keeping him at the edge of that fist. Still taking that half a step back so he doesn't smother his work. Good work. Good work there from Edwards. Last 10 seconds. Very happy that the red corner saw the final bell. Got a cut over his left eye just in the last moments of that bell. Oh, that was quite bloodthirsty, isn't it? Warrior's heart, warrior status. Ladies and gentlemen, after four rounds of boxing, we go to the referee scorecard. Referee Mark Bates scores about 40 to 36. And your winner, Oliver!
Oli. Warrior. What a fight. Yeah, he was tough. I like, caught him with that right hook. Right up, quite easy. A proper bite where he buckled, but I mean, he's, just, he's so strong. Russian, that's the Russians for you. <laughs> How does it feel being in the ring tonight? Do you know what? I had a year out, so it's just good to be back. And I just want to say thank you to all my supporters here. They've shown all their love, love and uh, all their um, support. And I want to say thank you to Dean for putting me on the show at such short notice. Well, I mean, you really delivered. I feel like everyone in the building was watching that fight just like, you know, that, that was boxing right there. You know, like, me and my coach, we had a game plan and it was just to like, stick out that game plan. And when you, if you saw an opening, take it. And I like, see me on the machine, I just keep coming and keep coming. And when I see a bit of bubble, I'm like, oh, I just want to go for it. But I did stick to the game plan, my, my coach is happy. But when we get back to the gym, I'm back in the gym next week, we're just going to work on better fit, up more things and improve. I felt like every single shot that you threw in there, you threw with spite, with, with that venom. Is that fair to say? Yeah, like, um, for the fight, we've been working on my right hand. I mean, just be working on the right hand, straight left hook. So I was just like trying to throw that because I'm always, I love using my jab and left hook. I thought, right, I had to try something different. Use my right hand, right up, got right hook. So I stuck to it and uh, we got the job done. Dwayne, what did you think of that fight? No, that was boxing. That was good. I love the way he, he controlled, controlled his range. Whenever he tried to smother his work, he stepped back, keeping him at the end of his fist and he can see exactly what his opponent's going to do. There's a small criticism. I think when he got comfortable, your head movement started to go. That's it. And then bringing the jab back a bit lazy. But other than that, beautiful. Controlling the range, controlling the distance. It was good. Fantastic performance. Dean? I can just only echo what he was saying. He seemed comfortable. He seemed like he was enjoying himself. I see him, you know, slipping and doing his bit. Listen, he's got, he's got to start moving on now. I think, what, you 8-0 now? Yeah, so... Now we've got, he's got to start looking, him and his team, I'm just talking from experience, just in the game in general, southern area, certain titles, slowly. But I think you said earlier, just in the conversation, inactivity. So now you probably want to get active and start playing. He played around with him today. I've seen other fighters fight this guy and have a hard time. And you showed, you know, your little levels above this guy. So it's good. It seems that, you, you know, you've got a bright future, continue to grow. Continue to develop. Well, you, you got this man here, him, him and Pete. Your man, the man has been around the block. So, you know what I mean? Only time, you know what I mean? We've got more shows. We'll chat to your team. You know, more time, I'm sure. You've got a great fan base today. In time, you can do even more. I think you had one week's notice and he's had a good turnout. So, we'll have a look. We'll try and help them. We'll talk and stuff. April, we've got a big show here. So, you know, we can look and talk and see. But, obviously, you've got to get um, ranked to get these titles. So, you've got to play the game correct. So... You know, keep doing your thing. Positive words from Dean. Really exciting fight, really exciting fighter. We're so looking forward to seeing you back out. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thank you, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, now it's time for our ninth bout of the evening. Scheduled six three-minute rounds in the Super Welterweight Division. And now, making his way to the ring, Angel Emilov! And now, ladies and gentlemen, his opponent making his way to the ring, Asinia Digos Byfield! This is uh, 
muitos os peixes. Hmm. Yo, I roll up, no catch on me. Calm down, no match on me. Stay away from these attitudes. So they come around and they ask on me. That's five thousand capacity, five thousand capacity. Even spread that over the UK, and then add it up and get back to me. You pussy, you must come back to me. Mad, mad, little mad to me. Who the fuck would it catch you up? That's like good enough to be catching me. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout scheduled for six three-minute rounds of the Super Welterweight Division. This bout is sanctioned by the British Boxing Board of Control, timekeeper at the bell, Nick White, and the third man in charge of the action in the ring, referee Kieran McCann. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner, he's wearing the red with white trim. His official weight of 157.6 pounds. He has a record of 58 fights, two draws, 10 wins, and six of those wins come in by way of knockout. Hailing from Sofia, Bulgaria, Angel Emila! And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner. He is wearing the black and orange. His official weight of 158.6 pounds. He has a record of 21 fights, one draw, 15 wins, and seven of those wins come in by way of knockout. Hailing from Reading United Kingdom, Asinia Degas Byfield. Box for a British title. Came up short against uh, Ted Cheeseman. So um, the big cheese. The big cheese. So he's been in the game for a little while and um, at at the top level. So let's see what he puts on tonight. Going about with a jab. He's a awkward sapo. He does box at different angles and uh, quite fleet footed. Let's see what he, he, he pulls out the what? bag today. Fleet footed. What does that mean? Uh, dances around quite a bit. Oh, I'm not telling you today. Okay. I do know a bit about boxing. <laughs> The jokes don't get old with you, do they? It's not a joke. <laughs> Stop. Light on his feet. Settle down a little bit. Again, you can see the bit of experience. He's throwing a bit of subtle feints in there to get a reaction from his opponent. Just to see how he does react. Nice body shot from his opponent. He is quite awkward, isn't he? Right. He, he knows his attributes and he, he sticks to them. That's the thing. Yeah. Quite an orthodox technique. That's right. I, I like the way he's catching the shots and returning. He's not letting there be any moment that looks like he's not in control. So even though he, he was under a, a bit of an attack, total control of his guard, and landed some shots of his own. Keeping in that range there with his shots there, keeping it into the fist. I like the way he, he 
changes from long to short, short range. Yep. Very unlawful, very awkward. Uh, awkward. from the ghost. Beautiful. Yeah, lovely uppercut. He's taking his time, he's just placing his shots. He's not wasting too many at all. He's just putting his shots in, he's having a look at his opponent. Good work there. Nice first round. Very comfortable. Built strut towards his corner. He's happy with his work. He's very happy. Let's see what adjustments he makes for the, for the second round. Controlling that. Controlling the crazy good jab and when he felt comfortable he started to uh, start throwing them punches and bunches with success. As I say I like the way he closed from long range to short range, back to low again and then scoot around the outside. Very difficult to, to land in the or to understand what, he, what he's... Uh, about to do in there to to find his to find your opponent's rhythm. So let's see what what, what Byfield does in the second round to assert his dominance. Here we go, have a little dance, wake up them feet. Nice defense from Byfield. Lovely punch selection. That's right, he's comfortable on the inside. With Richard McCollum here. Having a look at him as he throws. Having a look and he's seeing where he's open. He's able to return successfully. So nicely on the inside with That's that right. high guard. That's right. He's having a look, and this is this is a demonstration as to what I was describing earlier. With that high guard, you can slip that uppercut through the middle, touch around the body, and give flip, slip that uppercut through the middle. Because where the elbows are away from the body, you've got that gap to slip it through. I like to see him turn off the ropes and use those angles he was doing in the previous round. I to say, the opponent's not doing anything for him to think about. He's, he's in total control, even when he is taking a rest in the, on the ropes here. Yeah, it would be nice to see him step back and get back to some boxing. That's right. Some long range boxing, I should say. Complaint. He's getting complacent, signaling to the crowd. He's in total control, even when he is a wrestling the ropes. Lovely chopping around him. As you can see, he's gone, he's gone to orthodox stance, making it difficult for his op opponent to read him. He's digging his shots in, those spiteful shots. shots. Yeah, those shots the body are accurate and spiteful. Good work from the Bifo. Definitely crowd pleasing stuff here. Crowd pleasing stuff from Bifo. Impressive. Showing why, why he was a, a British title contender. Good work on the inside for Buffalo. Very nice.
lovely word. There's not much to say. You can see him. Um, Myfield is in total control. He's Laughing doing and smiling in the corner. Exactly, he's doing exactly what he wants to do. He's having a good time. He's getting a bit of a rust off. Showing, showing his class. Hopefully, he doesn't get complacent because what's going to happen now? The opponent is going to start throwing some panic shots. I believe this fight is scheduled for six. We're into the third. Controlling with the jab. Back into his southpaw uh, stance. success there. Yeah, due to a bit of complacency, yeah, as he stepped round his opponent, it was a little bit slow from Bifrost, slower than what he usually does, so then he was able to um, catch that, that, that short left hand as he went on the outside. Back in the pocket. Good work. Waiting a bit too long now, Barfield. I mean, if he uh, kept up that pressure he was in a previous round, he could get a stoppage. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought what the game plan would be. Just to, to make that... Uh, statement that you're back. Them well, just stay in control. Just show them, show them that who you are. Just stay in control. Let's not get complacent and make silly mistakes. So stay in control. You were in the first two rounds. Good stuff here. Good work on the inside from Byford. I feel like his opponent is also getting quite comfortable. That's right. That's because he is. It's almost like he's taken a, a round off almost. Then it's now made, it, as you say, the come. His opponent starts stepping it up a little bit because he's probably noticed he's starting to slow down. That's right, yeah. Again, another good round. And even though you can see he's taking his foot off the gas, he's still in control of that round. Corner's telling Bradford to work some more on the, on the inside, get some of those uppercuts working. He's telling to double up on the uppercut. Jab out. 
Skies up for the shot. Good work. Lovely angle for that right, right up the pad that he threw just a moment ago. He done it Lovely. again. Good. He sees it works and he does it again. Come off the ropes just to turn his opponent now. Mm, he's saying to his opponent, come here. Yeah, he's backing you in. I think he's looking for that stoppage. For him to get that stoppage, you need his opponent to open up so he can get those clean shots in. Nice, nice work to get in. Up and down. Good up. waiting for his opponent to stop and then he, he presses the action straight away. Great consolation. Baffles content to continue the, the switching the shots up and down. That will open that body shot. Good work. Good body shot. Again, you see the reddening around the, the midsection of the opponent. Oh, now his opponent is beckoning him. Good round. Good round. Five foot in total control. Small moments where you saw him switched off as he as he moved around. Ended up uh, receiving some unnecessary shots, but as I say, total control. Looking comfortable in the ring. Second up, round five. Fifth round now. Rafa's right, back with his jab, controlling that bout. to walk now. Yeah, nice clean shot landed by his opponent. A little reaction out of Byfield. have livened up in the last couple of rounds as well. As it goes, but I thought it slowed down a little bit. It's still, it's still landing and telling shots, still in control of the bar, but the pace has just dropped down again. So it, 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 it's more comfortable for your opponent. But before the pace that, that Bifold was bringing, he, he couldn't keep up. Yeah. Two 
good work, good variation of show. Good variation show. Good, good body defense from a bad foot. His opponents have undeterred, but that was a lovely body shot. Good body shot, that's right. Turner at this point. Good work there for Turner. Good work from both men. The body shot started to take its toll. Even though um, the opponent is front, fighting in burst, you can see the body shot is taking its yeah. toll. He's definitely slowed down. Yeah. Heavier on the feet. Good Byfield uh, closed the show. Again, with a, a, an opponent like this, that is, he's got his survival techniques on high level. Difficult ask, but uh, Byfield is getting those shots through. Body shots and the upper cups up the middle. So uh, let's see if we can capitalize, put a little bit more sting on those shots and close the show in the final round. Do you know sometimes I feel like you watch certain boxers and you can just tell that they just really like fighting? That's right. And Byfield is one of those boxers. Well, as you say, um, looking at his record, the uh, percentage of knockouts aren't that high. He does have a few knockouts, but they're not as, as, as high in relation to the wins. So, um, as you say, he probably wears down his opponents. Over the longer rounds, you'll probably see that stoppage. Byfield is in total control. Okay. Oh, he's got a bit of bend behind those shots. He landed a chopping shot to the body, followed by a chopping shot up top. Hey, should just work. It should work good. It's waiting a little bit too long. How long do you know? I mean, I don't know, but do you know how long it's been that, since Byfield's been in the ring? No, I haven't. I haven't. Do you know, to be honest, I think I, I actually thought he uh, retired. I think it's been quite a long time and I'm just wondering how that period of inactivity is going to affect someone's work rate. 100% it would, it, it definitely would. It's, it's been, uh, I think just, just, just uh, under a year. Oh just okay, short time than I expected. Oh, 
but it was a year before that that his last bout was. Uh, and then a year before that. So he, he's, he's almost boxed once a year for the last three years. Wait for the official uh, decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after six rounds of boxing, we go to the referee scorecard. Referee Kieran McCann scores the bout 60 to 54. And your winner, Asinia Degas by Phil. Asinia, fantastic performance. How do you feel being back in the ring? Ah, it feels good. It feels great to be having fans actually supporting me. <laughs> you look like you were really enjoying yourself in there. Yeah, I was having fun. My coach was saying to me, you're getting hit. And I was just like, but I love it. I love it, man. Otherwise, I just, I'll switch off and just box good enough to win. So I wanted to stop him. Uh, fair play to him. He's tough. Um, he took some good shots and stayed in there. So hats off. But, well, I had a great time. <laughs> you looked very, very comfortable on the outside. You look very, very comfortable on the inside. Um, you're quite an awkward, unorthodox fighter. And you brought that all together for this performance. You know, how does it feel for you, obviously, having the support of your friends and family? Yeah, it feels, yeah, it feels great. Last time I boxed, it was um, in Madison Square Gardens. And it, yeah, the atmosphere over there was unreal. Yeah. Yeah. All that, son. Madison Square Gardens. Giving it the big end to Barry McGuigan. Don't start with that, son. All right, mate? <laughs> but even though the atmosphere was incredible over there, I come out as obviously a hostile crowd. By the second round, I had them cheering me on, so that was, like, great. And, but to be back in the UK and have my fam family, my friends, this is my daughter's, this is her first fight that she's come to, so she's over the moon, so I had to let her... She looks so excited to be here. <laughs> Did you enjoy that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dean, what did you make of that performance? Listen, listen, Asinian Byfield is in depth in British boxing. This man could have done great things in boxing. Him himself is his worst enemy. Obviously, he's with John. John's the fucking taskmaster. Me and John have our ups and downs, but I know one thing. He's a taskmaster, so he's got this man in Nick. Why he's coming today and perform. 
This guy sometimes does his own thing. He writes his own scripts. I, am, I follow boxing, so I know what he does. As soon as he went in there, I could see the skill set this man possesses. You could have done so much things with your career. We've got a platform Still here. Can. Still no, can. I'm not saying you can't, but I'm starting from this conversation. I've seen people fight the man you face today, and you made it just look like it was a walk in the park, southpaw, switching, you know, like check hooks and moving. It, it was good to watch, but I appreciate talent, and I can see the talent, what you are. You need to hone that skill, do something, just win some things for yourself. You've got to put yourself first in this. Like you said, you fought at Madison Square Garden. You might have came up second, but you must look at yourself. When you retire, and you look at your kids, you must have something to say why you wasn't here. You've got to dedicate your, an application and apply yourself and win something. Say, you know what? This is why I wasn't here. This is why I was away. And this is, you know, give something back to, for yourself. Now, you've done it all for the other people. Give something back for yourself. You still, you're, you've still got years in the small. But I'm telling you that as someone who's a fan, who watches boxing, who studies boxing, you're very skillful. You've got a lot of talent. You can, you can beat some of these guys who are out there fighting. You've got natural ability. You've got to believe in yourself. Win some things, win some titles, and just say, look, I've done this. Even, you know, you might not win a world title, but at least win some things, and it will mean something to you when you can go and talk to your family and say, you know, I went on this journey, and this is what I've done. You know what I mean? Good work. You know, you've got a few good fights, and you just try and make it count. That's what I'm saying. Make it count. Any final thoughts? Um... Yeah, it's good to be home. Thanks for all the support and everything. So, yeah, man, it was worth it. <laughs> nice to see you in there. See you soon. Ladies and gentlemen, now it's time for our final bout of the evening. Scheduled for three minute rounds in the middleweight division. And now, making his way to the ring, Josh Cook! And now, ladies and gentlemen, his opponent making his way to the ring, Alex Branson Cole! bout scheduled for four three minute rounds in the middleweight division this bout is sanctioned by the british boxing board of control the timekeeper at the bell nick white and the third man in charge of the action in the ring referee mark bates 
And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner, he's wearing the black trunks. His official weight of 162.8 pounds. He has a record of 24 fights and one draw. Hailing from Manchester, United Kingdom, Josh Cook! And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner. He is wearing the silver and blue. His official weight of 161.8 pounds. He is currently undefeated with three wins. Hailing from Kent United Kingdom, Alex Branson Cole! Right, ladies and gentlemen, Second just time. about to start the final contest of the evening. Alex Branson Cole, starting nice and fast. Give him that range. We saw Branson Cole out last time on the Black Box Global Show. That's right, that's right. And he said he's going to work on settling down a bit and just uh, keeping his opponent at range. Let's see if they've been working on that in the gym so far. It looks like they have. So Branson Cole's the first professional boxer out of Faversham in 60 years. So there's a lot right on his shoulders. Is he going to be their new local hero? So if I use the southpaw stance uh, to his advantage. Keep his foot on the outside for that long left down the middle. But it's swinging on that to him, push, push that jab out. It's, it's almost like a, a looping jab. See how uh, Branson Cole throws that jab, he, his, his elbow flicks up a little bit. He just, just control that a little bit and just keep it, keep his elbow down and turn his fist around. Do you feel like that's because of where his placement is of his guard? You know how it's quite far, far um, in front of him? No. Okay. I think that's how he's throwing his jab. He's, um, it was guard being in the wrong position, but the, the execution of the jab, he doesn't need to flick his elbow. But I, I say wrong, but really, it's where you're comfortable. So if it's working for him, then it, then who are we to change it? But I, I can see him left hooks to the body, straight shots to the body, because he's, he's wide open it's with open, that way, yeah. with that right, that lead um, hand is. Uh, left down the middle from a branch and call. Definitely branch and calls well. Nice and controlled in the corner. They're relaxed. It seems like they're happy with what he's done so far. 
Let's see how he comes out of the second round. I, I have seen his opponent out before. You've got to be careful because if he starts to, to throw too many sh punches in bunches, the opponent will do the same. We try to match him. So that's when it become a shootout. So let's see what, what uh, Brenton Cole does in second round. Nice hook over the top of Branson's guard. So those, those will be the the money shots and up against the south four. Off that, that straight backhand through um through the middle. Or uh, the hook under the jab, hook over the jab. That's right. So you've got to disguise disguise that shot and make it work for you. Guys are shots to make it work for you. Anything through the middle. But I think Branson's got his feet in the right position, making it hard for a opponent to uh, establish those shots. Nice and comfortable for Branson. He's, he's got that. that it's all old school European stunts. Lee hands a little bit higher on the elbows from what, what I'll be comfortable with, but uh, it's working for him. Good jab, good jab, nice and sharp. Shoulder roll, but he uh, should have rolled nothing and then returned a, a sh right hand that was out of range. Good work, good work, keep him on the ropes. But I like to, for, for a Brazil call to judge his distance a bit better. Mm. Throwing them. Um, Long shots when he's in close, he's making a miss. So that to bring him up, bring him round. Short shots, that's better, that's better. Quite enjoying his level changes throughout the throughout the fight. It's good, it's good. It looks as though what he said they're gonna work on, they actually have been. a little bit wide as you saw the shots come through the middle. See what adjustments they make for the third round. Branson Cole's in total control. Third round now. That's right. The third round. Be nice to see Branson Cole a little bit more composed. Good 
work, good work. He's got, got him in the back foot, but I like to for a present call to keep his chin down. He's, he keeps uh, taking shots down the middle, and he's taking nice the full brunt of them shots. Keeping him at his range. Nice, comfortable pace for Branson Cole. Taking off his position, centre ring. and controlled. Smothered his work just a bit but again I see he's in control. Good selection of shots on the inside. Cole's trying to do with his jab, he's keeping way comfortable, he's measuring him out, but he, he's just stepping in a little bit too much when he uses it. That's right, but his usage of it has kept his opponent on the ropes. That's correct. You know, he's given him something to think about throughout the rounds. Mm -hmm. He's not really taking his foot off the gas in that way. Oh, I think the DJ's given up on us. Here he is. No, 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 no. I thought you just went um had a quick break. Here we go. I think uh, what Branson Coach needs to do in this round is just, just keep it more of the same. Nice, comfortable cruise to a victory. Don't do anything fantastic and try uh, trying to get the stoppage make it become messy. Good work, good work. He's kept his eyes on the opponent. I like the way he dipped underneath that jab. Nice. Good left nice hand down the middle. Hand. That's it. I like that. That he saw it worked. He just simply just done it again. That's all you need to do. Boxing is very simple. It's us that makes it makes it difficult. He saw it worked and he just did it exactly the same thing again. Good job. to the body. Right, keeping his, keeping it, his opponent under pressure, keeping him on the ropes. Slightly smothering his work coming in. Yeah, uh, yeah definitely. I think this is just to do with him. Yeah, he's, he's still a bit of a novice in the sport, so um, give him some time to grow. But uh, he's got the right idea, but as you can see, he lost his foot in a little bit. His balance is... Is it just, just slightly off, but um, he's winning the belt. Nice 
nice hook from the from Brenton Cole. Good jab in the inside to snuck that through whilst the opponent was throwing, throwing his shot. He snuck that jab in through the middle. Nice pump selection as he's keeping his eyes on his opponent, seeing what he's doing next. That's right, that's right. But what I did notice, I think that's a bit, which is, is a, a mistake you do not want to be ingrained in your style, is when he throws his left, his right does drop back beside his waist. Yeah. So it, it, it leaves him open. That's right, for that counter. Start for Cole, for Branson Cole. Good start for Branson Cole, wait for the official decision. Greek side boxing. Ladies and gentlemen, after four rounds of boxing, we go to the referee scorecard. Referee Mark Bates scores the bout 40 to 36. And your winner, Alex Branson Alex, welcome back to the ring. Nice to see you again. How are you doing? Good, yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm happy to be back. What did you make of your performance? Yeah, it was all right. It wasn't as, uh, wasn't as best as I could have been, but um, it's a great learning fight, pushing forward, and uh, I'm going to take a lot from that. I think the last time that we spoke, Dwayne had some feedback, and you said you were going to go away and work on some stuff in the gym. Dwayne, remind me, what was, that? What was the things that he said he was going to work on? Uh, I think um, I think working on his range, keeping him at, at the end of his fists, was one of them. I can't remember the total list. I was trying to think of it, but definitely that is something that I noticed tonight. That he was um, more in control, keeping him at the end. Some other work a little bit, but nowhere as much as the last time. And 
um, is at a more settled pace. Before it seemed a bit rushed, but now he seemed in total control. So definitely improvement from the last bout. Yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, you seem like you were very much settled into that fight and picking your shots quite nicely. Would you say that that's something that you have worked on? Uh, thank you both. And um, yeah, we've been working on a lot in the gym and uh, that was one of many things. And uh, it's great feedback from you two, so thanks. Dean, what did you make of that? I will echo that. Look, this man has, he was on the show the other day. Sometimes nerves plays a part in this game. He was in a hard fight, he got a cut. So sometimes that changes the dynamics of fights when you get a cut. The tempo has to change. You're looking for, you're thinking, shit, I don't want to get the fight stopped. I'm going to try and up the tempo. As he said, he looked more settled, he looked more composed, and that's good. I know his management, they wanted to keep him active. I don't know what the deal we're going to talk after. I've got a show on March the 12th. Your manager said you want to be on it, but we'll talk again because it's quite quick. It's all about turnaround and if you can do the ticks and whatnot. But look, Alex, I like this kid. He's got He's humble, he's, he's willing to take criticism, and he's willing to just fight at all costs. It's a rare quantity, you know what I mean? And he does what he needs to do, so credit to him. You've got another win, you're marching on. All you've got to do is go back to the drawing board and continue to, continue to evolve and learn. Learning is key. The, the, the important thing is not staying in the same place. As long as you're moving forward, you're making the adjustments, you're in the right place. Yeah. Looks like you've got a big year ahead of you. How many bouts would you like to have? Um, as many as uh, life can, uh, and as many as I can even in, in life. I mean, life chucks at you all sorts of things. So, uh, I, you know, I can't say many, but five, six, that'd be, that'd be ideal. But um, I just want to say thank you for Dean White for having me on the show. Again, another great show. And um, everyone who come out, you travel two, two hours, 60 miles. Um, I appreciate your support. Thank you. We go again. Let me pick up Alex's brother. He's been on me all night, you know. Good man as well. The Coles, respectful brothers. Him, very supportive. I respect you guys. Great fight. Continue doing your thing.